It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Andy, Renee, Alex, and Lori are all here. But you know what? I'm glad we have a good panel because there's lots to talk about, including did Apple drop its plans for encrypting iCloud after the FBI complained? We're missing the point when we're saying we're banning face recognition and Apple's opportunity with health data and more. There is a lot to talk about. It's coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. MacBreak Weekly comes to you from the Twit LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 697. Recorded Tuesday, January 21st, 2020. Stop sniffing my AirPods. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Hover. Use a domain name that truly represents you and your passion. Visit hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Apple Alex Lindsay is in studio with me from the Pixel Core. Hello, Alex. Hello. Good to see you once again. Renee Ritchie from iMore.com. Mr. Ritchie, bonsoir. Bonsoir, Leo. Oh. It is great to see you again. You have behind you the Santa Monica Pier, I believe. That, that is. is the Apple. Uh, Apple is responsible for that. I have no control <laughs> over what they choose to put on my displays. I love That's going to be a controversy on the Internet in three seconds now that I said that. Yeah. Actually, is it Vegas? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what it is. I love those screensavers. They add more all the time, right? Do you like the underwater Santa ones? Santa Monica Pier. Yeah, it is. Okay. And yeah. uh, you like I, that's part of the game I play. What am I looking at? That's kind of fun. <laughs> at least you can find out now. And I think like 90% of them end up being Dubai. Yeah. When you finally find a lot out. of Dubai <laughs> shots. It's a beautiful city. Lori Gill also here, managing editor at iMore.com. Hello, Lori. Hello. What? I don't have a beautiful image of Santa Monica in my background, but I do have a new background. <laughs> you got wood. <laughs> <laughs> what I is... took a page from from uh, Andy's book, and I'm trying to make my background a little more interesting. But as you can see, I still it's not perfect. Or this side, it's not <laughs> yeah. perfect. I'm still showing too much. Yeah, there's a I'm towel or something that's shining it. very bright. But it's all right. J.J. Abrams would approve. It's a little, a little <laughs> specular highlight towel in the, in the back there. Also here, that's Andy Anako. He is. Always a pleasure uh, from WGBH in Boston, the man of the sideburns. I learned oh. so, I learned something uh, sad the other day. I don't know if you knew this. Isaac Asimov died of a, from a blood transfusion and got HIV in 1984, and that's how he died. It was covered up oh. at the time. Yeah. Uh, his family and doctors didn't want to say anything, and it wasn't until all the doctors involved had passed away that that information was revealed. Yeah, actually, his his family was advised to keep it quiet, because at that time, uh, it's it's hard for people who, who weren't alive days. during that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, it was uh, it, nothing was a nothing was understood about HIV, and also it was coupled to really horrible, horrible bigotry and homophobia, and so basically, if anybody if anybody had the disease, they would definitely not want to tell anybody about it because it would be ostracization ostracization at best. And violence at worst. Isn't so. that sad? Uh, and of course, uh, it was after several years after that that uh, efforts were made to make sure that the blood supply was not contaminated mm -hmm. and, and you couldn't get sick from the blood supply. But I only mention that because your sideburns always remind me of <laughs> Isaac Asimov's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it. I, I've also been changing. It's. This is this They're is like bushy the winter, today. Th this, yeah. this is it's the winter, winter between where Wolverine I, and Asimov. And yeah, 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 where I, yeah, where I sometimes where I, I, summer it's I, I I trim them just basically to cut down on the echo. But uh, <laughs> winter sometimes winter it's like it's it's dark at four. I can't get motivated to start any new project, even something as more complicated than brushing my teeth and basic shaving. And it's like, <laughs> uh, well, what the hell? It's before it's dark outside anyway. The day's over. I may as well just shut down the computer. Now, Renee, you tweeted this top story uh, yes. a little bit because you remember when this happened. Reuters yes. this morning reported that Apple had planned to encrypt iCloud backups in a way that even the FBI couldn't get them, couldn't see them, Apple couldn't see them. But they dropped those plans after, according to Reuters, 
after the FBI said the move would harm investigations. Reuters said they have six sources on this. This was about two years ago. So just as background, you should know iCloud is not is encrypted so that nobody but you and Apple can yes. see what's on your iCloud backup. And Apple very famously has offered to provide those uh, that backup. Uh, in fact, they did in the Pensacola Naval Air Station shooting. They provided that information from the iCloud backup on the shooter's phones uh, to the FBI almost immediately. Uh, it's a double-edged sword, though, because anytime there is a key, and this, this underscores also the problem we have with AG Barr and others asking Apple to uh, back off on encryption on the phone, Any, anytime that key is available, there's always a risk. And all you have to do is ask Scarlett Johansson how she feels about the fact that iCloud is not trust no one encrypted she said. well so those are there, there's several different things that work there the Scarlett Johansson was part of and they actually all fit together which is which is weird but what happened to Scarlett Johansson and other celebrities is that um, iCloud was encrypted but they had means for you to get into your account one of them was your password Apple had and a lot of key. people reused but Apple well, no, also but before, had the key. But be, before Apple had the key um, if people used the repeated password and that password was compromised or if they were public figures and their security questions were publicly available people could break into their account or social engineer their way into the account. That led so, Apple so, to deliver two-step encryption. And two-step encryption uh, was different because you had to print out a recovery key. But what then happened is people turned it on and they promptly lost their recovery key and they were shut out of their iCloud backup, which is their kids' photos, their wedding photos, all those things. And it became a huge issue for Apple because for most people, it's not a hacker or you know someone stealing their data or even a subpoena. That's the biggest worry. It's them losing access to their data. So Apple deprecated the old two-step authentication and created a new two-factor authentication. And with the new two-factor authentication, Apple held a key so that if you could prove ownership, they could unlock it for you and restore your access to iCloud because that was the biggest support issue they were facing, not, not the legal requests and not the hacking requests. And that was four or five years ago, and we documented it a lot, had a lot of discussions at the time. Um, since then, that has not changed. Absolutely nothing has changed since since iCloud went, which is where the story is a little wrong because it's not that Apple had plans to go to encryption. They were they were fail secure and they switched to fail safe. And Tim Cook mentioned in passing when pressed in a German interview, will you do fail secure? And he said, it's something we're always looking at. And my understanding is they have these debates inside Apple constantly. What about people locking out? What about the government asking for stuff? What about all this? But it, it creates a level of complexity. It's the same one when they say, why can't you have touch ID or face ID and your passcode? It's, well, then if you burn your finger or something else happens, you <clears> need <throat> a recovery password, and they're right back to people losing their recovery password. So I, I, well, I believe it's something though. that's an active discussion, but they haven't, they haven't implemented that as an option yet. Hold on a sec. Yes. Regardless of the two-factor two-step, yes. Apple has the key to iCloud. Apple, if asked by law enforcement, can say, here is unencrypted iCloud data. We know that. They just They do it. with the current system, yes. And also Were most, they considering uh, a system where they would not have the key? That's what I got this Reuters story from. They had a system where they didn't have a key. You had a recovery key. So they you're switched saying the to fail, a system where they have the key. The, you're saying that the fail, uh, in, what is it, fail secure system fail secure. Fail secure versus involved fail safe, them yeah. not having a key. Yeah, you had to have that physical recovery key. Now, so there's there was always a, how long was that? There was a theoretical period of time. 2015, I believe. So um, at that time, if law enforcement goes to Apple, there is no way they can unencrypt. Yeah, I mean, some people, if you're super technical, you could say that Apple could maybe do uh, a person in the middle attack on their own servers, which is what we said about right. iCloud, uh, iCloud right. messages. Because unless people manage their own certificates and do end user side encryption like PGP or like some, because almost every storage service, online backup service, the vendor also has a key. Yes, but Dropbox they, some of them does it, OneDrive does it, Google yeah. Drive does Amazon. it, Amazon does it. And there's a good reason for that besides the the what do you call it so fail secure fail safe. and fail right. safe besides fail safe the other reason is there's lots of things they can do if you want to view your data on a web page yes if you want to dedupe if amazon yes. wants to dedupe data all of that the data has to be uh they have to be able to unencrypt the data without your say so without your you know yeah. so almost all cloud services work that way in fact steve gibson yeah. looked at all of them the only one he could find that was in his mind trust no one 
was uh, Sync.com, where it's encrypted to the point where they can't decrypt it. Only you can. And it's Someone it's like LastPass. It's only on device. What you want is yeah. only on device decryption, right? So there's no man in the middle possible. It's not being decrypted, then streamed to you. Yes. It is decrypted on your device. LastPass does that, but no cloud service, including iCloud. Yes does that and sync and apple's apparently does. apple's thing is that if, if you really <laughs> want that like they, they believe that this is the best solution for 90 plus percent of people 90 plus percent of the time but if for some reason you don't want that you can turn off icloud backup and do an itunes or now a finder backup and there's an encrypted button there and then nobody can get right. to it or pre-encrypt <clears throat> this wouldn't work with the icloud phone backup because yes. there's no way to do it but on your desktop you can have an icloud folder or a OneDrive folder or a dropbox folder yes and just make sure nothing's in that folder unless you Encrypt it with VeraCrypt or PGP before it gets put in that folder. Then you're and backing up Some services up a block. let you do that. There, there's definitely like two camps. There's a two, there's two worlds to live in. There's one world where we can be totally encrypted, but we can also lose everything. And if you think that your children's photos That's getting right. lost forever are worth the the security that you have, then you do want to be fail secure and you want to do something like. Um, only back up on iTunes and only um, to a hard drive on your computer at home that's encrypted, you know, using encrypted backups. But if things like um, the music that you listen to and your kids' photos, they're more important to you than whatever data you store on your phone, then you do want to be fail safe. And, and Apple, I think in, in this case with our phones, believes that an iCloud backup should be fail safe, not fail secure. Because if, if, my mom loses all of her photos of her kids, she's going to be horrified. She's not going to care if someone steals her phone because she knows that there's nothing on there for her that needs to be protected at that level. She can just erase her phone, be done with it, everything's good. So there's definitely the two camps. And Renee, back in 2007, did talk about how, you know, let, why not let those of us who feel experienced enough and, and feel... Uh, reliable enough uh, to keep our own key. Let us keep our own key, and then everybody else, you know, Apple can keep that key. It's yeah. also but, an but, but, it's also an education <clears throat> problem because your mom probably didn't see this story from last or two years ago about the 16 year old who hacked into Apple's servers and stole 90 gigabytes of secure files. He was able to do that because Apple was fail safe, not fail secure. And maybe your mom would be, if she knew about this, because I bet you anything, she thinks your data is safe and encrypted. On Although Apple that was servers. an iCloud, that well, was an admin machine okay. that he hacked into. Yeah. Well, but would he have had access to that if Apple had? Apparently not iCloud. iCloud is pretty well protected. Okay. Yeah. Pretty but but well. it's it's also it's it's always this tension between customers who want a service that always not only always works but always works the way that they expect it to even if they're expecting it to do something that is uh, prohibited by the laws of uh, laws of, of gravity physics uh, and <laughs> probability uh, and having to actually make good decisions on the user's behalf of uh, just like uh, you can't get you uh, the networking box that I have my NAS behind me uh, is uh, in many ways a pain in the butt to use because it'll get thrown offline or it'll stop like its security certificate will go bad and needs to be renewed and I'd much rather have this thing that just always always works but the reason why it fails is because it's not taking any shortcuts to make me happy it's assuming that I know how to how to run a secure box that's available across the internet whereas when you have something like a ring doorbell uh, or a, any other sort of IOT sort of device the consumer wants to plug it in give it a Wi-Fi password and it just simply works everywhere and the only way to make that work is to uh, have default passwords that are shared by every single device that this manufacturer makes and sh uh, shared secrets uh, that are uh, shared known fa known uh, passwords and logins uh, to central uh, central entities and that's the sort of stuff that gets immediately exploited by the bad people so it's it's a there's a lot of tension between those those movements uh, and Apple it's uh, I it, this there would be a, a wonderful series of like oral history books inside Apple about saying here's how many people are complaining because they've this was the emails that w customer service is sick of getting emails that begin with but this was like the last video the last Christmas video we had of mom and dad before the accident and we lost them forever and now you're telling me that I backed them up to iCloud and now I can't get them back 
and how do you cut down on that while also trying to assure people that bad people can't get access to your data and they also can't be uh, they they won't be victimized by let's say a future pivot of law enforcement to insist that uh, that the government has uh, 100% access to all of your cloud data at all times and and i think that a lot of times uh we always say Apple does not, focuses on what ninety percent of people want to do ninety percent of the time. This is what ninety nine percent of the people want ninety nine percent of the time. But, but I only again submit that's but, because they don't understand yeah, that don't that know. also means their data is vulnerable. But, but I think that they they uh, I know my parents and many other folks would would consider their data vulnerable if they know that they there's there's chances that there's no They'd way for them to it. get back into right. it. And and I think that if you're doing something that you're concerned about, you know, in that in that sense, um, you know, then you should. Educate yourself on how to employ tradecraft and do here's, what you need to do. Here's to why keep it I think secure. that education is an issue. We didn't. Nobody cared about privacy ten years ago. Right. All of yep. a sudden, we're learning more about what that means, and right. so suddenly, I would say a, 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 a vast majority of Americans who, in the past, weren't worried about it, are suddenly worried about it. Right. So yeah. I think maybe it's a question partly of security versus convenience, but also partly of ignorance and not knowing fully. Just because you know, well, Apple says encrypted, encrypted, encrypted. I think that they're they're giving people the impression that it is very. Well, our very culture is saying that too. Like well, we've become incredibly infosec sensitive to the point where, um, and the whole reason I started looking into this is that Lori told me you were going to write an article about encrypted backups, and I went to you know friend of the show Dave Nanian and said, "How do I encrypt Super Duper?" And he said, "I will tell you, but please don't ever do it, and please don't ever tell anybody to do it." <laughs> <laughs> because the minute you do that, we can no longer recover anything. And I have had so many people tell me they lost their photos to fire, to flood, to, to they, they forgot the password, all these things that – and there is this tension between infosec people who say encrypt everything and backup people who say no please only encrypt stuff that really needs to be encrypted it shouldn't be a default state for you that i've tried to find a middle ground and i think there is and i think the education that's lacking is that it, it like it, encryption it, by definition isn't always good and neither is the lack of encryption but you have to identify the stuff that would mean if this being stolen or subpoenaed is is worse than it being lost please encrypt it. If it being lost or destroyed is worse than it being subpoenaed or stolen, please do not encrypt it. And okay. we have to educate people about both those choices. You also have to acknowledge that Apple is sensitive to law enforcement. Yeah, I mean, one absolutely. of the reasons Apple would like to make this uh, so that they can't decrypt it is not U.S. law enforcement. They're not worried about the FBI. They're worried about Chinese, Russian... Right. And, and, other, and I think Australian yeah. and and they and and data patriotization repatriation. Yeah. So I think Apple would love to be able to say, sorry, we can't hand that over. But they don't and they can't. And they also uh, are sensitive to the criticism from the FBI. There's that's a lot of negative headlines the well, FBI is putting out. Well, it's also about them not ha helping, not helping in the investigation against terrorism. Refusing to refusing, refusing to help is yeah, that's bad PR. <laughs> bog that, that's bogus language. You know? Well, and, yeah. and I think that also the and by the way, when the president tweets it too, that hurts. Uh, well, I well, think noted infosec expert. Idiot. Noted, noted idiot. And yeah. yeah, I understand. <laughs> infosec but, expert. But, but, but remember, you, you, you forget, you forget, Renny. He, he has Giuliani we're on his side. He's, he's a noted. He, he owns a cybersecurity company. <laughs> we're talking about public perception, and that's also important. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, and, and I think that also that when you talk about legislation, which comes from public perception, uh, drawing that line too far out means that it puts them at risk of going, people saying, well, that's not reasonable. People have to be getting into it. Um, yeah, I'm, whereas, I don't envy them. They're in a tough position. Right, so by, they've drawn the line with everyone around the world, including China, including everyone else, that the phone is the line. Right, that's yeah, the line so they they drawn. do encrypt that, right? You yeah. can't take my phone and get into it. Unless you, I mean... They believe they, the chance of it being can, lost is higher right. than a Well, a and, and by the way, I should mention... <laughs> The 9 to 5 Mac report that the police were able to unlock the Pensacola shooter's phone using Gray Key. They're celebrating right. Gray Key, both of which have exploits that apparently work with an iPhone 11. But it, what, these weren't even iPhone 11s. They were 5 and 7s, yeah, I believe. Yeah. So this but, was, but they have but unlocked they, iPhone 11s. Separate, exactly. Yeah. Right, separate separate right. stories. So, well, they have Checkmate, right? That goes back to almost all previous iPhones. Except yeah. not the 11. Checkmate doesn't. Yeah. The, so they can use ones. Checkmate against the Pensacola shooter's phone. Mm -hmm. And and Gray Key, and, and this is frustrating, but Gray Key and Celebrite, as part of their business, discover and keep secret exploits that yes. allow uh, FBI and other and so do nation states. How does it Apple other about? nation states like the Saudis to decrypt yeah. phones? I have to China, I just wonder why US. Apple doesn't spend like $5 billion and just buy those companies. 
Call it a day. <laughs> so just buy, just buy ones, the whole company. Just buy both Grakey uh, and Zelebrate and go. That's an oh, endless that's, process. Well, that's, but yeah, it's still they like they, it, they need, like, the like why not? Here's your, here's your, uh, here's your benefit. they're sensitive to bidding this. wars, you too, guys so they don't to... want to make exploits even more valuable. But they, and they have, by the way, Apple's paying more and more and more for exploits than ever yeah. before, right. probably because of this, right? right. Yes. Yeah. I think what is the, the last bug bounty was up to a million and a half dollars. So yeah. even if Apple had to buy one company a year for two billion dollars, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> all you, like all it, just, you it would be the cost of being secure. They could afford it. Yeah. But then they all, would divest. Then, then we're talking company, about a they monopoly, get bought every two though. Years. Yeah, monopoly of cracking phones. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have, you yeah, got, well, if all, Apple just owned the, the company um, that cracked phones, it would probably be a problem for the FBI and, and the government. And There'd be a lot of problems with that. Yeah. Anybody who knew that uh, that you could form, if you know of a good exploit, or if you are a former employee of a company that's now owned by Apple that knew of an exploit, if you can just simply file a file a corporation with Delaware, yes. and then three months later get a check for half a billion dollars, this would be a quite quite an. And it would still be less expensive for Apple. Influence. This and, and there's not that many of them. There's well, not that many of them. But this you're gonna, you're gonna run out of checks at some point. Why it's a big deal that they want es back key, back doors or keys in escrow hmm. because you can't keep a lid on this stuff exploits or right. escrow you, you can't keep a lid on this stuff and so what governments i mean look at this is going to be a given and it'll happen in the united states governments will say you have to i don't care how you do it you have to provide me with unencrypted clear text whenever i ask for it and you figure I think out australia how to is it. trying that right yeah yeah russia's yeah. already done it uh, I, I don't know what the state in China is, but I would guess <laughs> that every Chinese company can do it. But I think, but I believe that Apple is talking about walking out of Russia. Because, you know, I believe I'll they're... I'll believe it when I see it. But they're talking about, like, they're not... The, the phone is they're the not ever going to walk out of China. And, and it, no, it, Russia's, Russia's not a as minor, valuable a market. Yeah, yeah. Russia is right. a big deal. Mm. Also, also, they have you, you have bigger problems in Russia in terms of human rights abuses than you have in China, conceivably, uh, because you have one person that needs to be gotten rid of. Whereas with China, it's something that's a whole that, minority of Muslims. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, exactly. If you're if you're in the north northwest of China, it's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. You don't you don't want to be a Uyghur and uh, mm -hmm. have an iPhone. But there's no. But I don't know where you go. And this is the problem: is that yeah, you could say, well, as you just did, oh, people need to get better at infosec. <laughs> Well, that's not. Well, see, well, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that <laughs> I don't think that you can't expect Apple to do it for you. I think right. you're exactly that's, right. You know, that's you that's that's all. I'm they're saying. not, and they're not gonna, because, because of governmental I, pressure among other things. Right. I think they found I, a line that they that they're willing to defend, and it's a defendable position, right. and they're gonna. Stick well, with because that. when the FBI says you didn't unlock the phone, they can always say, "But we gave you the iCloud backups. Right. We cooperated. Yeah. We gave right. you all the data we, we could. And, and right Everything now, this isn't had. unlocking the phone from Apple's perspective. It is. Uh, literally building something new. Like I think that's really an important distinction. That's what they understand. wanted in San Bernardino. They wanted they, a new OS that they could push all on of the these phones things. that would allow them to try many, 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 many keys. All these, all these access requests from the government now is not. We want you to take something you already have and unlock it. They're saying we would like you to create something new that burrows into our yeah. into your own system. So it's like you have a very secure castle wall we would like you to knock a hole here right. and then put a you know like put a hole here that goes right to the center and then we want you to give us the key and you know and, and we're going to assume that nobody can open that door what they what they really want is the is the precedent they want the precedent on the books right. that yeah. says that if you if government demands data that you might have conceivably have had access to you have to give us the technology to fork it over and this starts with Unusual cases like the like active shooter like these uh, these shooting cases, uh, they, uh, in five or ten years though that pr that precedent will say will basically expand to say that if you have a server that offers cloud services there has to be you have to have a, you have to have a government representative on the on on site that has access to a keyboard and a screen that can access anything that's on that device or on that. And server, again, we're so. talking about the fact that they already have all this person's metadata. So they already know every person that person called with that yep. phone, everybody they texted, everybody. Like, right. they have that information they before were. they get into it. And they got into it. Uh, and, you know, like, when we talk about risks here, if if we decided that it was the number of people dying to terrorists, which uh, is horrible, but not a high number, if we compare that to your pool, your car, <laughs> um, we would say no one should drive and no one should get, no one should have a pool because those actually kill 
far more people. I was wondering where you're going with a swimming pool. Okay. I <laughs> yeah, I mean, compare that to my pool. Yeah, you can't have a pool. Yeah. I mean, like, it, you, you would literally make Americans more safe by, statistically, by taking away their pools than giving them I already them did that with phone. my damn hot tub. I can't get it more than 104 degrees anymore. Oh, you Gosh. What? You just have Nanny to go state. state. You can't sous vide that whole side of beef anymore. <laughs> Nanny state. You know, you can, you can work, uh, you can... That can be that can be sorted. Yeah. No, I have. I've been coffee? trying to get my hot tub no. hacked it's, for it, years. It's based on the thermometer. Yeah, but it's a digital thermometer. Uh, the digital yeah, I, that's what I thought. Is there must be a way to mm -hmm. change well, this? You just gotta remember that the heater. Come over is to just, the house, will you? The heater is oh. just a. It's just being told when to turn on and off. Right. You can put another thermometer. I can trick there. the heater. Yeah. <sighs> I, I I just wish that Apple <laughs> Apple Apple has been able to like buy huge billboards saying that hey we are the we are what's, the company that that was on your on iPhone your stays iPhone private. stays on your iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. But what I wish they would do is increase the table stakes of uh, of knowledge for anybody who's using a phone these days like the, the tape for if you own a car you don't have to know how fuel injection systems work you don't have to know like what the o2 sensor does you do have to know that see this hole right here you need to check the oil and you need to replace you need to keep adding oil and do oil changes and if you live in the northeast you need to like get an under get, get the underbody body sprayed or else it'll rest out they're like only you only have to know like three or four things to keep a car running for 150,000 miles. Those are the table stakes. And I think that uh, we need to understand what the table stakes are for under for basic uh, literacy of owning a phone or owning a computer. If people understood how encryption worked, what their tr what the the trade-off and what the balance point is between we want to make sure you always can get access to your phones, uh, to your photos and your videos and your and your information if your phone gets lost or stolen, we also want to make sure that if your phone is lost or stolen, those phones, photos and videos don't wind up in other people hands and if uh, if there were a better education campaign people would have a better appreciation and a more realistic understanding of a here's what can and cannot be done if you are careless and you lose your phone but also here is why when the government says that apple is refusing and trying to create the re refusing to help an investigation and trying to create the false impression that apple has this big manila folder in an old-fashioned old-timey <laughs> steel filing cabinet of all this uh, terrorist data that they were just simply refusing to hand over they will know that well no we know we understand that that's not how encryption works so we're at the table stakes of information and understanding has to be increased and apple is in a good position to do that i think i don't it's a really interesting conundrum yeah uh, i think apple's the conversation is good yeah it is it's important and i think education is important and i think apple's default yes. is look if you want it encrypted that's on you Right. If you want trust no one encryption because there are na negative side effects, that's on you. And, you know, it'd be nice if they uh, didn't pretend that everything was secure and safe. That's an advertising right. slogan. Not don't a, worry about it. Don't think about it. We're yeah. doing the thinking for you. Well, that's, it, it'd be that's, better, that's yeah, it'd be better if everybody knew. And then, uh, and then it's our job, by the way, to educate people on how to keep yourself safe and private. We're going to yeah. do more of that. I think that that's an important uh, well, and, responsibility and of tech journalism these days is to t to explain what is going on, what is safe and private, what isn't, and how you can make it safe and private. For instance, stop using email, start using <laughs> Signal, things like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. very simple. But if you want secure communications, it's not iMessages, it's not it's not uh, it's not email, it's Signal. By the way, I want to ask Renee uh, real quickly on this Reuters article. I presume you read the whole thing. They yep. did make yes. some uh, other assertions. I just want to check with you because you're going to be the sure. fact checker on Reuters. Um, it it's did life, say, Leo. had it proceeded with its plan, and we wouldn't disagree with this, Apple would not have been able to turn over any readable data. You only disagree with the motive, not the fact. No, uh, well, the way that they're phrasing it, like, so my read of this is that they had one person who was not very looped in at Apple, and then a bunch of people on the FBI side, um, and it, and they, we have no way of yeah, those six, how sophisticated. Yeah, those six sources may have been all within the FBI. I, I believe <laughs> they were. I believe only one of them, one yeah. of them was uh, former Apple, and that, uh. that person was self-admittedly not in the loop on this. Oh, but my okay. understanding from people who are in the loop on this is that it is it has been a constant topic of discussion inside apple uh, and at first you know they were they were hardcore on this has got to be secure and fail secure and all of that and they realized that they were a bunch of scientists in a room and their parents were screaming at them yeah. and so they yeah. made the current system but now they're still like no we've got and like and then tim cook mentioned it they're having this huge debate about how to do it and how to set it up because the online is 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 just it's less error prone like 
I shouldn't say that. You're more likely to have a recent backup if it's online because not everybody is going to sync continuously to iTunes or the Finder. So it, it does have de definite benefits, but it's just architecting a system that doesn't compromise either end and making it available to billions, potentially billions of people. So to me, to my understanding is that's the hang-up. It's just they haven't... Well, here's what... It's, it's, it's on the list, but it hasn't been shipped yet. Clarify that. Uh, instead of protecting all of iCloud with end-to-end -end encryption, Reuters writes, Apple has shifted to focus on protecting some of the most sensitive user information, yes. such as saved passwords and health data. Is that because they yes. put it in the uh, secure enclave, or well, it stays it's, on it's, device? It's not in the... It, there's different iCloud. So there's secure iCloud, which is where all the stuff is stored. There's, oh, okay. stored and there's different iCloud. So they don't have Apple access thinks, to secure iCloud. They, so they they don't have a they don't keep a key for a bunch of different things that they consider too pro they, the things that they consider are better for you to lose than them to have access to, which includes your health data and your passwords Perfect. and things like that. Okay, but Reuters goes on to say backed up contact information, texts from yeah. iMessage, WhatsApp. If you back up WhatsApp to iCloud, you don't have to. And other yes. encrypted services remain available to Apple employees and authorities. Yes, and iMessage is a little complicated because when they shipped iCloud Sync, sorry, iMessage Sync, it was a little bit messy. And so currently, if you turn on iMessage Sync, which is called Messages to, in the Cloud, you have to turn that takes, on. Yeah, you don't have. Yeah, well, I, I'm not sure because I haven't, I haven't started off a new phone. Well, you know, without th this that is what we always have said. If 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 you can turn messages in the cloud on and all of your messages now go to the new phone unencrypted, then clearly Apple decrypted them in the back well, end. Well, no, so there's a difference. When you turn on uh, messages in the cloud, the, the key is on your device, not on Apple servers. If you turn it off, it defaults back to being on iCloud backup oh. and then it is on Apple servers. Oh, that's <laughs> very confusing. So if you want to keep yes. it secure, turn on messages in the cloud but then when it's yes. but but no that doesn't make sense renee because how so i have it messages on my old iphone 10s i turn on messages in the cloud i get my new iphone 11 without doing anything else those yes. messages propagate to my iphone 11 unencrypted that's yeah, so the only difference is apple doesn't so it works like the health data because it'll sync back your health data it's just it's stored in an encrypted iCloud uh, secure iCloud enclosure that Apple does not keep okay. the key for so if you turn on messages so if you in lose the cloud, all your devices they cannot help you okay so what's the happening is, is a key devices. going from my iPhone 10s yes. into the cloud yes. decrypting and then coming the unencrypted message down that's into my phone that's my understanding phone? yes because if you lose all those devices if those devices all somehow get wiped you are starting fresh no they wonder they don't tell people about you. this it's c freaking confusing <laughs> it, all right. it is it is and I think they'll they normalize it eventually <laughs> but like they still haven't rolled out iMessage sync for the Apple Watch yet so it's, it was it was very much a, and it was one of those things that was delayed several months after it was announced so it's my guess that they're still working feverishly to make it uh, they, they made it work. Now they have to make it work well. So let me. We'll okay, I'm stuff. sorry. I'm an idiot. Let me clarify. <laughs> no. I want to no see if I understand this. There is general iCloud that Apple has access to, authorities have access to. There is a secure iCloud that only you have access to. Apple can't share with the authorities. In that are your keychain passwords, right? That's where keychain goes. In that is your health data. Because I have tied everything into Apple Health, so it knows my blood pressure, my blood type, my medications. But that's yep. secure, and the authorities can't get my blood type from that, right? So the better way to think about it is only <laughs> iCloud backup is not secure. Is iCloud backup is the only thing Apple can get into. Oh, interesting. Everything so else is secure. Everything else is secure. Yeah. But the problem is it's not clear when you're using iCloud backup. For instance, yes. it sounds like messages in the cloud is iCloud backup. It's not. Yes. It's not unless you turn it off and then it becomes iCloud backup. Jeez Louise. <laughs> okay. In October, yeah. Reuters goes on. In October, <laughs> I'll do an explainer video for this tomorrow. Would I'll you do up. a vector for this? <laughs> yes. This is yes. not. And, and look it. If I don't know this, I guarantee you very few people know this because mm -hmm. I thought I was keeping up on this story yeah. and apparently I'm not. In October, they, according I, to, I, let me just finish the Reuters story. In October 2018, Alphabet announced a similar system to Apple's dropped plan for secure backups. It sounds like maybe Reuters got this wrong too. The maker of Android software said users could back up their data to its own cloud, to the Google Cloud, without trusting the company with the key. Two people familiar with the project said Google gave no advance notice to governments and picked a time to announce it when encryption was not in the news. <laughs> so he's sneaking in under the wire. The company continues to offer the service but declined to comment on how many users have taken up the option. I don't I don't even know where that check mark is. 
I don't know either, and I, I, I've never seen it. I'm sure it exists, and I'm sure Jerry Hildenbrand knows where it is, but I've not found it. <laughs> so this isn't the Android show. I'll have to get Jason Howell to tell us. Yeah. But uh, weird, the FBI did not respond to a request for comment on Google service or the agency's approach to it. But Android, like, it makes sense because Android is also run way more like a computer. You can do all sorts of computery things on it, and you may well get a little utility that lets you device-side encrypt it and then send it all to Google. I don't yeah. know. So, okay. So to recap... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the hell's going on and no one else does. There are a bunch of support articles and a whole white paper on this. So it is it is documented, but it is just not that transparent. What should, if you want to be the most private possible and you're using an Apple device, what should you do? Turn off iCloud backup and backup only to uh, an encrypted, uh, using iTunes or the Finder to an encrypted uh, backup desk. So none of the... You want to be most secure, just don't... None of the Wi-Fi yeah, backup. backup is safe back up with a cable connected to your computer and yeah. iTunes and make sure you type in a password, good one, for the encryption. Yeah. Not, not one, two, three, four. And I would use numbers. a cable because you don't know if someone is sitting there snooping your, your Wi-Fi. Yeah, right. so you want to be cable. really paranoid. So, yeah. okay. A non-juice-jacked cable. I guess it's going to want forever, Leo. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Uh, don't back up. Alex is right. Don't, if you really want to be 100% yes, don't, don't, don't back up. Don't back if, up. I, if I turn off all backup on my phone, this, yes. this is impenetrable. Oh, you also have it a it good... It's a crypto brick. Don't, and by the way, don't use a four or even a six... Yeah. Mine's a... a ...key uh, passcode because that's what gray key and celebrate break into. Mine's... I thought it was 26, but it's 24 characters. If you use a nice... I use 24 A characters. regular password like you would use on a website, a long random password that's going to be a pain and, in the and, butt and to And it doesn't even in. have to be... It has to be... The best thing is a phrase that you can remember. Yeah. You know, then like a, that, probably that it's probably unusual. the case that even Celebrite and Gray Key don't work. Uh, I, I would well, guess. they take years. We don't like know what. I think they said it was like a day for for six numbers, right. and then it goes up to a couple of years real fast. Yeah, I mean, I mean we're working eight, a little 10, bit 12. in the dark because we don't know exactly what their exploit is. But it's presumed their exploit allows. It turns off the time code and then allows brute force. Yeah, exactly. The time, sorry, the time, force. the time delete. So a good strong passcode like Alex's. So when you type it in every time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mother McCray. If, if I if I if, if it if it goes. Dead and in the car, I have to pull pull over. My like problem I, I can't, is Face I ID doesn't. Do you still use Face ID? Oh yeah, I didn't do it until <laughs> I had fa um, Face ID because most of the time it just opens. Right. It's it's when it's when I it's when like when it's restarted or or it doesn't recognize me or whatever because I wake up or whatever. When you're wearing the ninja suit. Yeah, when I'm when, when I'm wearing the ninja suit, I have to do it every single time, you know. And but it, honey, but, what is that clicking on the roof? Yeah, exactly. I don't know, but he did it 24 it, times. It's my tabby, it's my tabby boots, honey. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, but it's it's uh, but it, it it's actually easier to remember than most of the other ones I've had because it's just a yeah passphrase a unique, is good. Use unique passphrases. passphrases. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, so that's that's actually easy to digest advice. If you don't want your data to ever be seen by anybody else, don't back up. Right. Don't yeah. do Google Photos. Don't do iCloud yep. Photos. Don't do messages in the cloud. Don't, don't do not message. Don't use Facebook. Cloud. Don't use Twitter. Don't use don't Facebook. Use TikTok. Don't use don't Twitter. Use... Don't do, yeah. But, yeah, but don't make sure you really need to. Like, not just because you think you fancy yourself a badass. Like, you've got to really not need this stuff. No. Be willing to lose well, it. But I back up everything everywhere. I have copies of all yeah. of my data everywhere uh, because I don't want to lose it. I'm the fail Same. safe guy. I I'm not the fail I, I really guy. want Apple to add an option to allow for encrypted backups, and I will then promptly never use it. <laughs> well, and I. Yeah. I have a second phone that I don't back up that I, you know, if I'm overseas, I might use, I, I often use that one as the one I'm walking around with. So if it, I don't have to think about it. Um, wow. Yeah. So this was I, a good conversation. Thank you, everybody. Alex's mm -hmm. OPSEC is precise. Can but I, Alex can, really can has nothing to hide. So I don't know nothing. why he's doing oh. that. He just does it because he can. He's so good. That's what we think, Leo. That's oh. the true, that's the true professional there. <laughs> and we you have know, the irony evidence of, of the this, reprobates he hangs out with. The irony of this is, Meanwhile, CIA operatives are using Strava to mind their runs, and yeah, <laughs> they're not. Their OPSEC is terrible. <laughs> and our government leaders are all use, are no longer using secure phones. They're yeah. just using WhatsApp well, in the middle of the street with yeah. a store-bought yeah. phone. Yeah. Well, it makes it easier to investigate them, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> truth. What a world. Yeah, wasn't it? Wasn't there a story a while back about how uh, Russia thought that there was some sort of like super top secret meeting room in the dead center of the Pentagon, uh, the, the the plaza in the middle of the Pentagon, because they because they were using like fitness trackers and like yes. consumer devices because yes. all these really important people like Keep are going, are in the, going the same at the same time <laughs> yes. and they discover well no that there's a coffee shop there <laughs> that's where that's where they're going to get coffee. Yeah. However, <laughs> I would put an operative in the coffee shop just in oh, case. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. But just one. 
one. Well, that, no, that's the worst place because I'll never get the person's name right. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the, I have what? a coffee for Allison. Allison, anybody? Oh, it's Andy. A, yeah, a Dobby trap. <laughs> Dobby trap. trap. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't there? Wasn't there an industrial espionage thing a while back where they found out that someone was just hanging out at a bar with a bunch of drunken techno people? Yeah, that's the. They real, would just go there honestly, after hours. And that's the real truth. Yeah. You know. the, the, only, the only the only thing I wanted to point out is that sometimes you find that you have to. Uh, acquire new skills and new habits and that uh, there there is uh, one way to deal with all of the entities they're trying to get access to your privacy and your data is to accept that some things can be private some things can be a little bit less so uh, awareness and ability to understand what the risks are one other part of that is just realizing that there was a time where i would use like the, the same simple password on a, on any service that I didn't care about uh, because like, well, okay, this is just like some message board or this is just like where I'm backing up some pictures that I don't really care about. I'll just use this one, the simple six, six letter password. I can't remember. And now no matter what it is, like I've, I had to, I, I had to sign up for like four new uh, music stores to download HD music from. I had to come up with a new, like at least 16 letter password for each one of them because you, you realize that it, it's, stops becoming such a notable pain in the butt once you get into the habit of doing it all the time and once you accept that no i have to have complex passwords and they have to be unique per device and when you every time you get a new uh, piece of hardware or uh, subscribe to a new service your one of your first thoughts has to be what kind of data am i putting here and what am i putting at risk by putting that data there so you uh, I, I keep coming back to table stakes there used there used to be a time where you just didn't even care about hitchhiking and now you realize that okay that was that was nice in the 20s and 30s or in in the uh, universal uh madcap movies but now you can't do that anymore you have to think hard about uh who, the kind of strangers that you're getting into contact with well, that's I, the sort of stuff i'm talking about i'm hoping that we see more of what apple has been doing with um the you know the anonymized email i'm hoping we get to a point where apple kind of in, you know enforces that more <laughs> into more places like my biggest uh uh, uh problem with apple tv for instance is, is that you sign up for a new video service and now you have to put in your email and you have to put i'm like look i'm on a device just take the security from the device you can do that but you but they don't do you know like disney plus wants my wants my email and they want my thing you know and i, and I get that they want all that stuff i don't want to give it to them you know and i want Single apple to sign on is your is your uh, best friend i want apple to just like in I, slowly enforce on all of their devices yeah. That we'll sign in for you. We're not going to tell them anything. Yep. You know, and, and I think that that the anonymized email is their first little like we're not going to scare you, so we're just going to yeah. add this one little thing. Don't confuse that though with what Google and Facebook and Twitter are doing with their single sign-on because right. they are getting all the information. Right, 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 right. And so it's nice I to designed. have a trusted third party like Apple where you can but it's say. Not an and I use platform. my uh, Apple Pay, my Apple credit card whenever possible because. Right. That, not because I'm trying to hide from the grocery store my personal information, but just because it's it should you it should get in the habit of it. It's great, right. and you're right. They should do authentication that way. We we have a very strong authenticated device with a secure enclave, right. a very good face recognition system. It would be a great thing if this would become my password. And of course, and of course, if they do that, there's going to be people saying monopoly, and they're going to be saying that well, Apple is you know doesn't shouldn't be allowed to do this to us as as developers. But, but as Google, users, it's it's to our advantage. Google's already on that train, but but you're giving Google your information, so it's not quite the same yeah. thing. They just announced that you right. can use uh, Google Smart Lock and make your iPhone a trusted security hardware dongle. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. But it's with Google. <laughs> but also the really important thing to remember there is like myself included, for a long time we said that they would never sell our personal data because it's way more valuable to them. It's way too valuable to them. And then Facebook got caught selling data. Right. You know, Google absolutely hasn't, but we can no longer just use that as a blanket excuse for like well, no company would ever do well, it. We also, we also have to we, have to, we also have to understand the, the power of these corporations. Like Verizon says, hey, we really, security of searches is important. So don't use Google. Don't use DuckDuckGo. Use our Verizon and created a uh, portal that makes sure that your searches are secure. And this is the same company that got fined $1.5 million for having something that had to be called a super cookie for tracking Verizon users everywhere. So, yeah, this is, this is a problem. Everybody's getting into the act. You know, I, we've been doing on the last few shows the story that Google Chrome, they announced they're going to stop third-party tracking cookies. And... I thought, well, that's interesting because they are in the ad business. Why would they do that? And the more I think about it, the more I realize it's a complete red herring 
It's yeah. because everybody knows about third-party cookies. They have other means, so they're going to look like the good guys by, oh, yeah, no more third-party cookies. But they're always the first party. <laughs> but they're always <laughs> the first party. Uh, yeah. I want to. I want to do want to mention uh, Bruce Schneier, who just wrote a very good piece. Um, I think it was in the New York Times about face recognition, saying, you know, we're doing all this focusing yeah. on face recognition. Uh, and, uh, you know, making it illegal uh, in, you know, San Francisco and other uh, jurisdictions are starting to make it illegal to use it. He says face recognition isn't really the problem. We're banning it's face beautiful. recognition. <laughs> We're missing the point. The whole point of modern surveillance is to treat people differently. That is, in other words, to know who you are so they can treat you in the way they want to treat you. Face recognition is a small part of that. And this is exactly what we're talking about, uh, that there, there are multitude, a myriad of ways, from heartbeat to gait to fingerprint to iris. You can, see, you can read somebody's iris from meters away. From the MAC addresses Port broadcast by our smartphones at all times, there are a myriad of ways for people to identify us, for advertising companies and governments to advertise us. China is using it and using all of them uh, to support a surveillance state. This yep. is something. So it's not face recognition. And, and I think it would be nice to have a company that we could trust. Apple, for instance, randomizes MAC addresses on the iPhone. That is a little thing no one understands. No one, you know, they don't put that on the side of a, a hotel in Vegas. But that is a really great idea. Right. Yeah. And, it and really, fingerprinting is uh, stopping fingerprinting, too. Yeah. So he says there's an entire industry of data brokers who make a living analyzing and augmenting data about who we are. Maybe Google says we don't sell that data. It's too valuable. Nevertheless, that data is, is, is being collected, aggregated, and then sold well, by a many, many. He says regulate data brokers regulate the companies not face recognition regulate the companies that are gathering this data and using it and uh, i think he's exactly uh right that if we care about all this stuff um this it's not fa face recognition is the least of our worries but i think we do need a company we can trust maybe this is the one and only company we can trust. right now i think stuff. that apple's the only one really uh, focused on whether they're they're not perfect as far as protecting our our data, but they're the only ones that are slowly tying all these holes up. Well, and we you know, and then, we and uh, I mean you everybody on this panel, but also as consumers, we need to really impress this on Apple. This is a valuable commodity. Oh, I think they're good. We that. if you do this right, and you and you stick to your promises, and you tell us the truth, and you're very clear about it, you will gain hugely from this. So Tim, th I think he knows that. But I think there's also pressure from governments and others. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's something that could make you the you know even more successful. And the, and the thing to remember is is that the the our cell phone security has proven to be not you know it's not as high a level uh, priority for our legislature legislature as abortion or gun control well, or, or other things like that. Well, they don't understand it. They don't understand it and it's not it, it's important like when the FBI comes and does a little talk for them they go oh yeah that's 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 important. But if millions of people that's right send them emails that's right. in March and everything else important. they're going to be like well no 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 what i'm saying is they're going to go oh this isn't worth it. I mean you look at look at like that that's why they don't touch gun control right. is they're like right. it's not i'm not going to die on this hill literally that's literally you know exactly and so right. so the key is as users we will never have to worry about this as we long need as an NRA for privacy and security. Yes. <laughs> I think i i remember reading and i i wish i remembered who produced this information but i don't at that um, brand identity for, for young people, like people under the age of 18 are more likely to buy an iPhone than, than any, any time before. Like, so right now the young people brand identity is with Apple. And I've always wondered what, what that, why that was. And one thing that comes to mind is this idea that maybe, um, knowing that Apple is putting like our data privacy in, at the forefront of their, of what they what they do that might be because it's the young people who are more active and more engaged in recognizing the fact that we shouldn't be just allowing all these companies to have access to our data they get it a little bit faster than we do they figured it out a little sooner than we did and maybe that's why apple has been such a, like a important brand for the young people's future i don't know i don't know i when i talk to young people they don't seem to care at all 
<laughs> like, like, you know, like, like I, when I talk to them about security, they, they, they're like, yeah, you know, it's, it's all gone. Like, 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 you know, when I talk to people that are not that much younger than me and everyone down below, it always seems like maybe that, they're also a little more you know, practical. Like, maybe they understand that you don't need to have everything be a hundred percent secure. Right? Well, and, but I think that they're also just a little resigned to the fact that they just feel like everything is. You know, and and, and again, well, it's the, it's while a, I talk about part, it when I'm in other countries, is awful. I'm super careful no, about no. certain things because I don't, you know, I'm, I, I get concerned. When I'm in the United States, I don't think about it that much. It's not like I'm constantly worried about security. I'm just worried about losing this this little way of securing if needed. But when you go places like uh, Zimbabwe, is it more of a concern for you? Yes. Yeah. yeah I mean, there's definitely Especially when you cross a, borders, a, it's a concern. I mean, if, if, I, if I'm in uh, even, you know, uh, India or Cambodia or Iraq or you know those kinds of um, countries you you want to make sure that it's difficult you know to to sort that out um, yeah all right good com good 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 talk <laughs> thank you everybody good talk <laughs> um, uh, we are doing speaking of privacy uh, there's a constant battle by the way uh, to get podcasts to track you. Uh, I'm very happy to say we have no way to do that. <laughs> and we have because you now if you listen with one podcast app all the time, whether it's Apple's podcast, they do keep you know information about you or Spotify. In fact, Spotify's already announced they plan to do more of that. So when you see an exclusive podcast for one particular platform, I can guarantee you the reason that's happening is so that they can track you. We are we want to be everywhere you go, right? We don't track you, but we do ask for some information only because whatever we can find out about our audience helps us two ways. One, make better programs for you, but two, to sell our advertising. Advertisers, you know, will say, well, I want to know everybody who's listening. We can't tell you that, but we could tell you that, uh, you know, it's 53% uh, male and, uh, we, you know, and so that information is valuable. The way we get that is f completely voluntarily from you. And if you don't want to participate, cool, man. I dig it. But if you do, our annual surveys here, twit.to slash survey 20 just a few questions you'll see as soon as you look at it what we're looking for the kind of information what's your what's your what area is your job in what your age is that kind of thing don't answer any question you're uncomfortable with that's fine we don't keep track of who's answering we just look at the idea is for us to know uh, uh an aggregate a little bit more about our audience uh it's a big help we do this once a year and anything you can do to help us out we would appreciate twit.to slash Survey 20, thank you very much. Apple, according to uh, Strategy Analytics, which is, uh, see, Apple doesn't say, but Strategy Analytics has somehow figured out that Apple has sold. Because they got data. They got data. <laughs> they have data from us. and <laughs> Yeah, they do. They, they have credit card info and stuff. That Apple has sold 60 million AirPods in 2019. Make it 60 million in one. I finally broke down. <laughs> Ooh. I finally broke. Well, you know what I want to do? I want to see. Leopods these, Pro. I want to see. Yeah, I want to see if these really do smell like blueberries. <laughs> oh God! Oh, you're not gonna sniff them. You, you can oh. have Micah Sargent check for you. Well, these are a fresh, unworn <laughs> pair. See, I want to get. I want to get a, a green pair. So it reminds me of Plants vs Zombies. Doesn't it? Doesn't it remind you of <laughs> one of the plants in Plants vs Zombies? It is kind of like, like a little like organic little pea shooter. Little looking. pea shooter. Yeah. Man, remember how we mocked the AirPod uh, and how. That little dongle and everybody, it, we said, oh, it looks so hard. That's all you see anywhere. I'm watching mm -hmm. the NFL playoffs. All the athletes coming to the stadium. <laughs> Leo, little... put, put, point of logic, people who are using more modern ones, you don't see anything. So you don't know they're wearing. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're even you're, better. You're, they're, right? earbuds, they're even so. better. Do the AirPod Pro are a little bit less uh, obvious, right? You might, my wife. No, they're, they're just as obvious. Just, they just, stick out. <laughs> she's yeah. wearing them. Yeah, so yeah. you're saying when you say a little more modern, you you mean anything but Apple? Is that what you mean, Andy? No, no, no. I'm I'm <laughs> saying that just because just because you can't see like uh, uh, doesn't mean the, the difference between they, they might be wearing a competitor's that fits all the way the year. But I don't. I've never thought that that was a big deal anyway. G given that particularly at the time, if you have to have two little tiny little popsicle sticks like drooping down from the ears, but it actually like keeps in contact with my phone without breaking up while I'm listening to music, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, a couple of things about the the uh, AirPods. You can now have the poop emoji on uh, engraved. <laughs> Did you do Did that? You do it? No. Did you do that? Did you do that? I put my name and my phone number. I put my name and my phone number on it, hoping that right. 
uh, hoping against all odds that somebody would find these and return them to yeah. me instead of just saying, oh, good, they smell like blueberries. Let me, um, okay, never been opened, mm -hmm. sealed direct from the factory, and I'm going to let you do it too, Alex, as an independent nasal tester. Please get Micah there. Oh, they, okay, I, I, <laughs> just tell me, what do they smell like? Just don't, no, no preconceived notions. Blueberries. They smell just like no. blueberries. <laughs> and so, it's not the second time. It's like I had to close it. When I open it, I go. It's blueberries. But, it, but of course, it's not really blueberries. It's a highly carcinogenic chemical off gas. But <laughs> that smells. Man, does it smell like blueberries. It's like it's blueberries. Juicy blueberries. It's, blueberries. it's not like. It's a, it does it's smell a like neurotoxin that Dan, causes come a form of dementia I need that an makes things smell like party. blueberry. You're dead. It was Dan's good visiting you us from Orlando. I noticed your wife ran screaming. Dan, tell me. You got to close it first. Oh, yeah. Let it let it build up. Okay. It's got to build up. It's okay. blueberry. Awesome. Independent studio audience member. My goodness, yeah. Yeah, my goodness, yeah. <laughs> it's I, everyone's face. I can. What's tell amazing is, is it's like not just that it smells it like smells a blueberry like smell. It's like it is, like a juicy, ready to eat blueberry. <laughs> Are they made out of recycled <laughs> strawberry shortcake dolls? <laughs> <laughs> Alex, sir, you have never been to the to the state of Maine during blueberry season, oh, or else yeah, you would was, never say no, anything like it's that. Probably, <laughs> probably not. But I don't know, Andy. Probably. Have you smelled those Air AirPods Pro yet? Maybe they no, do smell like that. No, but I've had blueberry pancakes and blueberry pie in the same meal at a diner in Maine at the height of blueberry season. Wow. That is the definitive marker for you all blueberryness. You are Mr. Blueberry. All I can say is I grew up picking blueberries from, oh, uh, from the trees. Uh, was it in bushes. Maine or is it one of those fake blueberry patches where they just plant them for the tourists? <laughs> they were simply in the backyard. <laughs> Ooh, the best kind. Yeah. Backyard blueberry. I love backyard blueberries. Um, these aren't wire, wire, acute wireless charging, right? Or are they? Uh, I don't yes, know. Yes, they are. They are? Yeah. Oh, look. Yeah. Drop like, them on your pad. My Lenovo has a little Qi charge pad. If I just put it right here, it'll just light up and... <gasps> it does. Look at that. That is really yep. cool. All right, I can put my snozberry... Don't forget, in... don't forget those are there. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> it's a lot to spend for headphones that are that easy to lose. I gotta say, I wasn't gonna do are it. You, I resisted it. Are you? Do you, are you the kind of person that easily loses things? I consider myself somebody that, you know, I keep track of my stuff and I don't lose things. So that's never been a, a problem or concern for me. But I've read so many articles about people losing multiple headphones, I mean and actually. Uh, uh, Russell Hawley of iMore and and Android Central and all the other sites that that are a part of the future family, like he just lost his AirPods Pro right before CES. So it does happen, but I never you've was never before. lost your iPod AirPods. I've never. I've left them at home. I have to knock <laughs> on some wood them. right now, but I've I, never lost yeah. anything important. <laughs> like I uh, let my, me just put it this way: I'm on my fourth pair of here. AirPods. Fourth okay, pair. I can't. At some at some point, that's just carelessness. That, like, <laughs> anybody, anybody can. I'm, I'm saying that at some point, you need to say the, the the nanny part of your brain needs to say no. We're going to be using wired earphones, Leo, and let me explain why. Because we gave you three opportunities <laughs> to have wireless earphones, and you lost I them three it. times. That's no, just I think that maybe carelessness. that will teach you responsibility. <laughs> and and I'm and I'm saying that as someone who at this at, at, as I speak right now. I know that I have a pair of Air of AirPods somewhere in the office, but I don't know where they are. Oh yeah, well it depends on your definition of lost. I oh, know no, they're, they're in they're the just, house. They're missing. I just missing. I, I, I'm not I'm not Maria Kondo condoed enough to realize that I, I would have to actually take everything down to bare wood and walls to <laughs> definitively <laughs> One pair, find them. There might be something. Just to I find bought them. another pair and then I found the other pair under the bed because yep. I was wearing yep. them in bed and they fell under the bed. Oh yeah. So yeah. By the way. How much does this cost? Two hundred fifty bucks. You'd think I'd get some Apple stickers. You didn't get stickers. Where's my? St oh man. You have to buy the Mac Pro for the stickers, Leo. There's no <laughs> stickers. I guess that you're below the for that price. Required, and uh, how much do the wheels for those earphones cost? <laughs> <laughs> what? No, they have they have racks now, Andy. There's no stickers. They're ear rack no mounted. Stickers. There is a uh, there is a pamphlet on how to use them. I will say that my my uh, my untechnical wife uh, actually oh. just talked about was just talking this morning about how much she loves her AirPods. <laughs> like it was just like a very she lost them for a couple months, yeah. so she misplaced them. She's wandering around uh, trying to find them, 
and finally found them. And it was like a couple days later, she's like, oh my goodness, I don't know how I lived without these before. Like that's, and she had like, I don't know how many pairs of Bluetooth headphones and wired headphones and all kinds of other things. And it was always this constant frustration. And the idea that you can pull them out, they're generally Pretty charged. sweet, right? Probably, and I always, it always seems random. Like I try to keep charging them, but I always feel like I'm using them for a long time before I have to yeah, plug them back too. in. Yeah, me too. Like you just kind of keep on feeling like you're putting them in the case and you're like, this should run out. And you hear that sound like do, 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 do. And you're like, what? That still <laughs> happens? Yeah, exactly. Leo, do you still have your instructions for the AirPods Pro? I want to know whether or not Apple took away or, or removed the... Um, the reference to uh, air power finally on the on the on the instructions. I've when I bought lost, mine, it I've already still said lost that. the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd they go? How could I, how could I have lost them already? I, I mean, they I, probably I have taken them off. These are the warranty. I threw them in the air. You're like a magician. Oh, here they are. Wait a minute. Here we go. <laughs> okay, AirPods Pro. So, so you, I'm looking for an air power. I think measure. it was one of the last pages about charging. I I think it says something about. Um, Air, air power. Charge I mean, wirelessly. AirPods Pro charge in the case. Place case with status light facing up on a Qi certified charger. Qi cer Qi. That's hard to say. <laughs> Qi certified Qi charger. Chels, Qi shells. Qi shells. Qi shells. Qi shells on the Qi charger. On a Qi certified. <laughs> stop sniffing my AirPods. Or, ch or charge using the Show lightning title. connector. It does not. Yeah, I think he really likes that blueberry odor. I'm telling you, it's carcinogenic. <laughs> Again, it's a neurotoxin. One I'm of the sure side effects is. is making things smell like blueberries, for <laughs> God's sake. It smells so much like blueberries. It does you not You know what? $30,000 for a Mac Pro is not too much to spend. <laughs> you know what? They I did a new print loans. run on the pamphlets after the $50 yeah. million. They said, we better print some more pamphlets because yeah. they took air yeah, power they must have. Yeah. out of the pamphlets. Anyway, congratulations, Apple, on making a product <laughs> that everybody has to have several of. Yep. <laughs> Several of. Um, wow, something's going on with my my roly poly. <laughs> there we go. No, uh, I, I I can only see the f top four stories. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so we're done. That's fine. Thank we you, everybody. Need to see the top four stories <laughs> for joining me on the show today. Okay, let's see what else. <laughs> You know, it's 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 something wrong with the uh, the scrolly. The scrolly is is stuck. I have a stuck scrolly. How could that? You know, I wonder if it's the AirPods are screwing up my mouse. You know what? I it. You know, I'm putting these way over here. I bet you that's it. It's sending it. No. New active jamming features to interfere with all non-Apple Bluetooth now, aren't devices. You sorry for blaming the AirPods. I They're crying in the corner. I blamed the AirPods and threw them. Thank you. Give me your iPad. At least it's that like still Apple works. is daring the Justice Department to file a file a suit against them. Oh, this made me really mad. This made oh, me really mad. Oh, Congress had hearings in Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> That's not what made me mad, by the way. Boulder's a great it place. DHH? I live there. I yep. love it's DHH. Awesome. Yes. DHH and and the tile more than DHH, the CEO of Tile, who said Apple acted anti-competitively. By putting Find My iPhone in the <laughs> iPhone. Tile makes a Bluetooth tracker. Um, it's really big. You can't stick a tile to your iPhone and then expect to use it. And I, I, I don't know if I agree with her contention that by putting... I think there is merit in the overall complaint that Apple will can do stuff with iPhone apps that other companies can't do, right? Yes. So Tile does Private not APIs. have all of the location features that Apple's iPhone could allow apple has you know monopoly in that respect yeah. she was there testifying in front of congress so uh were a few other ceos including uh and then we're just testifying about apple uh the guys who do this is probably why they were in boulder you know those pop sockets that go on the yep. back of your phone that's from boulder i know that because my and son now a to, docket for the pop socket and you can rock it you can dock the rocket of the pocket <laughs> of the socket this is yeah. a very danny k uh moment um, the pop socket guy said, "I, you know, I we have to sell through Amazon. We tried not selling through Amazon. It cost us ten million dollars, but Amazon basically, you know, stole our design and started making their own. I guess that's what he was saying. I think he just said it was hard. I don't think he even said it. He did, they didn't stole say that. Yeah, I think, I think he, he, I think he was, says that there was they didn't like working with or Amazon. regulations on selling. Yeah, this field, this whole thing, and then David Hanemeyer Hansen, 
uh, who uh, is the founder of Basecamp, and I've talked yes. to him many times. He invented Ruby on Rails. He's kind of legendary in our business, despite his uh, propensity for buying very, very expensive automobiles. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but what could possibly be wrong with that? Um, Being a bit of a Twitter drama magnet. He's a drama magnet. He's the guy who yeah. said, my wife got a different uh, credit uh, oh, right. limit on the Mac Air Air." Apple card. Um, Outrage should never be, would never presage investigation. The investigation should always come first. Yeah. Well, that's what Twitter's, we're, we're, we're in this yes. world now where Twitter and the outrage engine, you know, pre, yeah. pre precedes everything. In any event, uh, he said that these companies, what did he say? He had a great line and I can't read it because I can't scroll. You're on. our only hope. Help us. Help us. Yeah. Help us, Congress. <laughs> You're our only what hope. What was he complaining about with Ruby on Rails? He said that, yeah, he said the digital ecosystem had been, quote, colonized by a handful of big tech companies. Help us, Congress. You're our only hope. Oh, he man. Doesn't like yeah, that that's, that's, yeah, that's that's not a great way to, to, to I mean, leave. For, that's, not, that's not customary for a tech company to say, please, Congress, legislate and interfere with our business because that's not that great. It's a long-standing tradition. If you go to the EU, for instance, uh, a lot of the EU's regulations and privacy things that whole you know what uh, jeff jarvis calls the like song the whole snippet thing came because publishers magazine and newspaper publishers went to the courts in the eu and said these guys this google they're really yep. making it hard for us and and so a lot i think it's not unusual for companies that can't compete in the marketplace to go to yeah. well, legislators and, you, and say fix it i uneducated I, legislators by large part yeah i i made a I, 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 uh, we sold a, a green screen plugin called DB Mat for yes for a long time yes you know uh, and we made a lot of money on it I mean it was you know it was a solid thirty thousand dollars a month <laughs> you know, that comes in on a hundred twenty eight k unprotected plugin like there was no there was no password there was no nothing it just installed and it just kind of came in and and I knew everybody knew that as soon as Apple fixes the green screen. Because their green screen plugin and Final Cut was so bad <laughs> that the reason that everyone was buying ours is because it was the only way to make it work. That is that the that the money the the you know the meal train would be over. You'd be Sherlocked eventually. I knew I was going to be Sherlocked eventually. Like yeah. it was like not a you know it 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 was like that was coming you know and and I wasn't so when Apple came out with with Final Cut Ten and they had a great uh, green screen plugin in there, I was like, well, we're done there. We're gonna move on to something else, you right. know. Now, and and the thing is, is that if it was, they had done it two weeks after you came out with DV Map, maybe <laughs> that was bad timing. That would have been bad timing. Yeah. You know, the thing is, is that they're not. And and the thing is, is that you you could see that it was there. And and definitely, when you're working with any of these big companies, you know. I mean, I've worked with a lot of the big companies. You know that they could squash you in a second. Yeah. And you have I to be conscious I would love to go to Congress that. and say, you know, there's way too many podcasts. You've just yeah. got to limit. <laughs> The well, number of shows available. But the the, the, the well, other thing, though, is that is that it is um, these companies have made it easier to sell than it ever has been. Like we, when we look at this, I mean, they, the idea they do have a monopsony in the Apple Store, though, right? But it's it's less. And than that's, 50, by the no, way, it's going to go to they, the Supreme Court. That is okay. Theirs. The Apple Store, though, that, that's their store. Like they have a monopoly yeah, on the their only store, store for for less than far less than half of the world's population, and definitely less than so half of the U.S. But it's also to there's Android. also an argument. Go to Android. There's like also it's, an argument to be made that Apple has proprietary access to private APIs that give them the ability to compete in a way that no third party developer can. But that goes right back to our previous argument because would you trust any random person with access right. to the APIs that There's cover good reason location that. Yeah. and secure? Yeah. yeah, so you have to have some sort of, like in my perfect world, there would be a vetting system where certain other trusted companies will do it. It's an incredibly gray and fuzzy line to try to walk, but I do think that there they're, they will, not only does there have to be, but there will eventually be regulated to be some sort of bigger system than we have right now at the App Store. But I, I really thought that part of the conversation, if we're talking about Apple, that they would be talking about borderline abuse that uh, Apple uh, wreaks upon developers through controlling all of their apps through uh, required APIs. Like if you had, like uh, if Apple suddenly decides that. Uh, a new cloud service is absolutely critical to the future of the company, and the future of the comp and the future of this cloud service require will be boosted by forcing every single developer to support it, whether it the whether that API is finished 
usable or uh, sensible for the product that the developer is making, they can inflict that demand, uh, the, that change upon the developer. The number of stories that you get from developers saying that we had all these plans for 2019 to spend most of our most of the money and time that we spend enhancing our product to finally bringing this wonderful feature that all of our users have been demanding. Unfortunately, we had to spend that time instead supporting an API that we don't use, that makes no sense to us, that Apple is not is so new that Apple hasn't really really documented, but Apple will not allow our app to be updated in the App Store unless it supports this new API. So Apple has a lot of a lot to answer for, but not being able to to track a tile tracker through the Find My app probably to me is not one of them. Well, and I, 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 I just want to say, like, as someone who have, has sold a lot of software, I... I just have to say that it, it, in the old days, there was, I have to now figure out how I'm going to distribute that, how am I going to secure it, how am I going to do the e-commerce for it, how am I going to do the promotion for it, how am I going to do all these things that the app store took away and made it, made it simpler. I wouldn't even consider doing it on my own anymore. I mean, I would absolutely put all, if I develop software again, uh, I would absolutely put it on the app store and I wouldn't complain and I just move I just move on because it has never been better than than what it was than it what, what it is now. I mean it, as someone who's who went through the trouble of doing it and all the stuff that that I had to do <laughs> of being able to distribute updates and know that everybody's going to get I mean the idea that you could distribute updates and that everybody actually knows that there's an update and and it's super simple for them to update and and do their thing is amazing. It is amazing. As someone who did this, I mean, like we'd update and, you know, 10% of the people would even know it was there and it was free, you know, and then they'd come back and complain and, and we, we, they were talking, oh, this doesn't work. I'm like, that's like three versions ago, you know? And so the idea that you can keep everybody up, up to date on it, that you can move those things down, the path, it's not perfect. It's definitely not better, but, but holy smokes, is it better than it used to be? Well, okay. <laughs> I mean, it was so <laughs> painful. Like, so, I'm sorry. Uh, there's I, I, two things. There's the APIs. And uh, by the way, that's historically been a problem. That for years, Microsoft was accused of having secret APIs in Windows. Right. There were even books well, written did, about right? it. Well, they did, right? For Internet Explorer. They did. And, and uh, any company that, took, that found them and used them was sadly uh, upset when the, they got deprecated. But that's the price you pay. Although, to mm -hmm. their credit, and credit is the wrong word, I mean, Cydia and other jailbroken app stores existed for years, and they only stopped when they became non-economically viable. Apple never, you know, never executed evil, sinister plans to destroy all the jailbroken well, app stores. Well, they just kind of, every time there's a jailbreak, they, they, yes. they turned it off. But they could have done a lot of things to make their lives really miserable. <laughs> okay. They never went out. They never, like, put DMCA takedowns on. As far as I know, they never personally sued Sarek, for example. I, I think, that, you know, <laughs> Apple is a little bit of a, speaking of nanny states, a little bit of a nanny in what it allows in the app store. It doesn't allow some political uh, comment in the app store. It doesn't allow adult Corn. content in the app store. Yeah. And so and it, and it is a monopoly. Uh, you know, it's actually technically a monopsony, and that's what the Supreme yeah. Court's going to be ruling on. The mon a monopoly is if you have, uh, if you're dominant in sales, a monops monopsony is if you're dominant in buying. And it's also like one of the if things. If you interpret I think the Apple as a buyer of apps that it then resells to which is kind of a stretch. But like that's an what, aggregator. An aggregator. But, but they, they, one they of the don't actually that, that it, say that though. They they straight up say we're we're not the owners of these apps. All we are is yeah, like yeah, but a that's store where people shelve. Of course apps. that's what they say, but that's what the Supreme Court's gonna rule on because in effect they are, because they're the only place you can buy apps. You have to so it's as if you went to a you know, a fruit store, if you will, and uh, the only place you could buy apples was from that particular fruit store, they would be... Or if Walmart said that they were all independent contractors, yeah. everyone on the shelf. Yeah. But the hard part, like the thing for me that the... the in general, the internet is really bad at multiple truths. And it is it is possible that <laughs> when are. the App Store launched... Um, they were like I remember that with Palm Info Center, and I was paying a fortune and getting terrible support. And it, it was the app market for mobile was terrible. And for developers, they were being charged way more than thirty percent, fifty five percent, seventy percent, more than that. And it's possible that the App Store was an incredibly good model in order to get the modern app economy, the pop app economy, actually going for people to trust software again on mobile devices and to get buy-in from all the developers and the millions and millions of customers that followed. That's called but it's also platform. Possible, That's a platform. Yeah, but all, it's also possible that over the last 10 years, we and the like, market and the customer base has matured to a point where the app store model and the agency model are no longer the one-size-fits-all solutions that really helped get them going right. in the beginning. And we have to evolve them to a more shared and flexible 
model. If I were going to write an amicus brief for Apple, I would say when you go to the Supreme Court, you point out that progressive web apps, PWAs, can be written and in no way limited uh, by Apple. And so anybody can write an app that's downloaded from the web directly onto an iPhone. And, PW, and, and what Apple should do is make sure that there's first-class support for progressive web apps. And then it's over because you don't have a monopoly anymore. That's you what they said to Playboy, remember? They said you guys can make a web app, and they did. A web app. <laughs> and I, honestly, that's a reasonable argument. As long as web apps can be as good as native apps from the App Store, that's then it's you're done. And if somebody wants adult content, they do that. I mean, they I guess they kind of argue that, well, that's what the browser's for, you know. But uh, make PWAs a first-class citizen on the iPhone, and and I don't think you have a case. And I think with Web with uh, WebGL, and I'm guessing pure guess that Apple is is going to have uh, Web Metal ready fairly soon. Uh, once all that stuff is in place, those are going to be much more <clears throat> performant than they are today. Yeah. And then just like on the Macintosh, because that's what happens on the Macintosh. You have an app store, but if you're a developer like uh, Rich Siegel, and you say, well, my BB Edit needs to do more, you don't have to sell it on the App Store. And and if you could do that on the iPhone, it, it, it's over. Then you say, well, look, if you want safe, secure apps that we vet, get them from the App Store. But if you're willing to take a chance, download your apps from a website uh, as a progressive web app, I think that's a great compromise. Our Twit uh, forums, the twit.community, is in a program called Discourse that actually does a very nice PWA version. And if you compare it to the App Store version, I prefer the It's PWA. way better. Yeah, it's, it's way, way better. better. So as long as Apple doesn't start pulling back, and now they won't because of this, pull back on Safari's PWA capabilities, I think... Yeah, I think it makes sense. That's a great solution. You know, it yep. has to be app-like, but, you know, I think that the, Twitter's... Uh, PWA is a very good app on the experience on the uh, iPhone. And then fix Daniel Jalkut's APIs and everyone will be happy again. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. And you talk to developers and you understand there is yeah. there is reasonable friction from developers about the App Store. There's things they don't, they're not happy with. Apple. Well, it's the lack of consistency. It's like Jalkut, like that, that app was approved every day for 10 mm. years. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, we'd realize that this is not really like the API you should be using. And he's like, I filed this radar eight times, guys, seriously. Yeah, right. Tim Cook is in Ireland. Mr. Cook is on his way to Davos in Switzerland, where he's going to have lunch with the president and a so bunch cold. of big shots. Ireland's probably pretty cold and damp right now, too. He's not as cold as Davos. <laughs> well, <laughs> no. How do you not miss it? But there's better skiing in Davos. Uh, he was speaking as he got an award from IDA Ireland, the state agency responsible for foreign direct investment, celebrating Apple's 40-year history in Ireland, where, of course, uh, the Irish <laughs> wraparound and the Dutch sandwich began. Uh, by the way, <laughs> Google has announced they are no longer going to use that, but they don't have to because they, they get a tax break anyway. So there's no point. And Amazon gets tax breaks in the U.S. So yeah. So there's really dollars, you don't so. you don't need the Irish <laughs> wraparound. Uh, the double it's the double Irish and the, what is it called? It's the double Irish uh, Dutch sandwich, isn't the it? Dutch, Dub double Irish Dutch sandwich. I think, I think that's so. what it's called. I can never. Also, the most dangerous cheerleading move in competitive <laughs> cheerleading. <laughs> they should uh, ban it. Cook said, uh, talked about AR. He's he's talking about AR again, kids. For, for a while, that's all he could talk about. And then he stopped. And I thought, uh-oh. But now he's, he says, I'm excited about AR. My view is it's the next big thing. It will pervade our entire lives. He visited a Dublin uh, development firm called War Ducks. <laughs> uh, I don't know. He says, uh, I guess they're a game developer, War Ducks. He also said... Uh, I'm super he, excited about AR. I'm not excited about games of AR. Yeah. I haven't played any that I thought were... No, no. VR for games. AR for mm -hmm. life. But but uh, there's so many cool things with AR oh, that AR I've been playing cool. with it that are just yeah. awesome. Outside of uh, AR, which Tim couldn't stop talking about, he says he's extremely excited about the role technology can play in healthcare. He says this intersection has not yet been explored very well. I think you could take the simple idea of having preventative things and find many more areas... Where technology intersects healthcare, and I think all of our lives would probably be better off for it. And there's a ton of money to be made. He didn't mention that, but I did. <laughs> uh, most of the money in healthcare goes to the cases that weren't identified early enough. Yeah, it's, yeah, you're dying now, so let's fix you. It will take some time, but the things we are doing now that I'm not going to talk about today. Those give me a lot of cause so, for hope. Diagnostic stuff, I, early warning stuff. Well, again, I think that the, the there's a cross section when we trust the company to hold on to our data. Of uh, if I have anonymized data and I know all this health information and I have DNA information, I can start 
modeling things that we could never model without huge samples. Yeah. So the idea that I have, I, I can see things. The problem in your, is the place you go to get your DNA sample does not have the until Apple does DNA. Right, testing, or or they or they integrate, <laughs> with or they that, do a deal with Twenty Three and Me or something that says, "Look, only we will get this information," or, or some some kind of thing. But but when you connect that, and you connect all that health data, you're going to be able to see things, oftentimes months or even years before. Uh, you know, they're going to start, and, and it's, it's things that they don't even know to look for yet. If they're just looking at all the data, and you're just you're cutting through that data, you're going to start seeing, okay, this person ended up having this, or this person ends up having this, and, that, and then you can start tracking back. And looking at all the all the things that happened to them, and then compare those things, and it, it's going to be it's going to be groundbreaking when it happens. It's just that like, keeping yeah. it private is the issue. Th th there could be some bumpy road before that. Uh, well, there's the I'm history. Like a history out. Well, I'm, I'm talking about probably more than a decade out, uh, because the, the history of tech and medicine is littered with a lot of things that were product, a lot of interesting ideas that were productized, for lack of a better word, well before the science was in on it. And the difficulty is that you have these. If you, once you decide, once you turn a lot of these digital health services into uh, just like these commercials, I say, ask your doctor about this pill. Uh, even though your doctor probably would have brought it up himself if he thought it were appropriate for your current condition. Uh, when people come in saying, hey, when people say, hey, for $400, I'm going to go get this full body scan. Uh, and then they find that, oh, well, there's a thickening in this artery near your heart that is unusual for uh, for someone of uh, someone like you. And so now suddenly someone has to go through a whole bunch of diagnostic tests, even though it's likely that if there's no symptoms and there's no family history of heart disease, this is just one of the aberrations that is normal for for the human body. So the problem so the problem that we don't want to face is that, well, we did see that you have a genetic marker that is associated with uh, that is associated with this disease. So we're going to put you through a very, very expensive set of diagnostic tests just to make sure you rule. We rule that out. So I, I, I'm just I'll be it'll be amazing if the only thing that technology and medicine does is automate paperwork and automate all these uh, uh, everything that uh, a doctor's office has to be able to provide uh, in, in records and forms to insurers, insurers and uh, certifications and take that load off of the actual practitioner and also just the simple things like universally here is here are all the prescriptions that this person is taking I mean, you're about to add a new one to it here are some things that you should know about that before you decide to write this script I'm I'm still amazed that uh, when I was taking care of somebody that uh, it, it was the first time that anybody had uh, like actually gone through and said, OK, here are the eight pills that this person is taking per day. And I and a simple idiot search said that maybe you shouldn't be taking this with this. And this also has uh, has the same effect as this other pill. And once you just simply not not saying, hey, I Googled this doc and you're wrong. Once you come back to the next appointment and saying, here are all of the pills that mom is taking, could you take a look at it and see if perhaps any of these are superfluous and that load got knocked down to just like four or five? That's the sort of stuff that is of immediate benefit uh, that is, isn't is theoretical at all. Although I, I do agree with you that once uh, a huge a, a huge data set of health data becomes uh, anonymized and available to researchers, that could be quite revolutionary, uh, either for the, enhancing the health of people or enhancing enhancing the number of reasons that insurance companies have to deny you coverage, uh, we will not know, but it's it'll be interesting in the next 30, 40 years. It, it, it's not all bad. You know, one time when I was in high school, I got a painkiller and a thing that keeps your balance after hitting my head really hard. And um, uh, football is great. And um, <laughs> uh, and uh, they were two different doctors that didn't know the other ones were doing it, and it was best week ever. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. Okay, don't do ever that. since ever since it then was, everything smells like blueberries to me. No, it was no, it was it was when the when the letters were peeling off the uh, blackboard. It, Oh, in class, I was like, "Whoa!" And I realized that no one else is seeing this, so I'm just but gonna—I'm not gonna react. I'm not gonna react. I'm not gonna fall over. Yeah, yeah. I have to say, they've already kind of done a lot of the benefit. I already see it. For instance, now because Kaiser, my health care provider, allows health records to be stored in iPhone, I think that's fantastic. I've got all my health right. records here yep. in a way. By the way, that's a lot better than the way I was doing it when I went oh, to yeah. the Kaiser website. Uh, and I just was looking at the health things. I could see what my heart rate is. Uh, right now, which is an amazing 59 beats per minute, I am clear. If it were 300, I'd be in trouble. But here's one that's new, and I love environmental sound levels. I can now see it says I have not been exposed over the last seven days to any dangerous sound pressure levels, and I can even get a graph 
of uh, yeah. of all the yeah. that is fantastic. So I now admittedly that's not saving my life, but the but as you incrementally add more and more features like that, I think we're getting close to something like that. I, I yeah. just feel like this is fantastic information. We, we we do we do we just have to remind ourselves that access to more data is not necessarily therapeutically useful, and that typically. The time when it's time, the the moment in which it's time to start actively treating a problem with your health is when a symptom presents itself. Uh, that shows you that a something is actually well. No, I, I'm, 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 that that that's traditionally uh, when doctors kind of move in. There is there is such a thing as preventative medicine. I'm not denying that. But if some if if someone says here are your numbers for this, well, that's what Tim was saying. They did, they don't wait until it's too late, right? Yeah. Right. No, but, but so I, I'm not sure I'd, I agree, Andy, with you. And in, in, sure. and here's why. I some of the some of the things that I've read about the Apple Watch saving people's lives has to do with the ECG monitoring, where there's been a, you know a number of people who didn't know that they had an issue with our heart. Their Apple Watch just kind of said, you know, we noticed that you've had some weird things happening with your heart. Maybe you should go talk to your doctor. And they went talk to their doctor, and their doctor said it's probably nothing. But we'll check it out anyway. And it turned out it was something. And these are people who, if they let, they went unchecked, may have actually had a really bad thing happen to them, a heart attack or something. How many times have you heard of young people who are way too young to have had a heart attack out of the blue die from a heart attack? This is one that, of those circumstances under which, like, that may have been caught and treated before it turned into a life-threatening incident. And and that and that to me, that's like not waiting until the symptom comes up. That's just having something on your body that's keeping track of you on a regular basis. At some point, if if there is something unusual, that sensor says to you, "Hey, we noticed that something's a little bit unusual. Maybe you should talk to your doctor about it." You're you're absolutely right. But a a uh, a bad EKG is it? I I would consider that an actual symptom. Um, as opposed to, here is a pile of data. Let's sift through it to look for anything that's aberrant or that is uh, that is uh, outside of the bell curve for someone of your age. And once you start going on a fishing ex expedition, trying to look for a problem that may or may not exist, again, a, a, a EKG monitoring that is actually real. That is, your heart should not be doing that. That's not just simply. Well, uh, I don't. I don't think it's, not, it's not. It's not just like your heart was racing for. Uh, 10 minutes last week and hasn't recurred before or since that's more like you don't know exactly what stresses inside your body you're not putting you don't have enough sensors to understand how that was going but you're you're absolutely right but i'm just saying that i believe that a that ecg monitor that is describing a, an actual symptom that is presenting well, itself and i and i also think that I, but I, I think that the the issue is i don't think anyone's going to do anything with the data for quite some time i think that what's going to happen is we're going to start seeing data and then they're going to start tying it in and you start when you connect it to the health records and when people are willing to share those into the system, yep. um, you're going to start seeing things that people are dying. And this this marker happens six months before all the time, you know, and it's and, mm -hmm. and, it, and it gets to a point where the, the the correlation rate is high enough that you do decide that that person should probably get a test when they get that because you know, it's, you know, more than 50% yeah. of the time they got six months, you know? And so, and I think we're going to start seeing that when we start seeing the data, because, um, you know, and, and I think that a lot of that stuff also, when we get back to prescriptions, it's going to be like, you're, we're going to see the data that's going to show us that that you're not reacting well to that prescription drug, you know, and we don't have, you don't have to tell the doctor that the doctor can get an alert or if you decide to do that or whatever that is, uh, that's there. I think, I think that's where we're going and I think it's going to take a long time, but you know, we've been working on it for a long time too. I want to say happy birthday, hover.com. It's 11 years old today. Hover is our preferred domain registrar. We love Hover. I know uh, a lot of you have watched us talk about Hover uh, in the past, and uh, many people, including Steve Gibson, who I think it came to it independently. He was kind of shocked when I said, oh, yeah, they're our sponsor. He said, oh, because <laughs> I was looking. He was with the, the, one of the older, best, no, better known uh, registrars and was just really sick and tired of their poor service, their upselling. And uh, he asked on Twitter, who's the best domain registrar and it was universal everybody agreed hover.com we love hover i have many many domain names registered that's why i'm logging in right now 
I've got two factor on it. That's going to take me just a second because I want to show you I've got a lot of domain names. And right now is a good time to get a domain from hover.com. Hover's turning 11, which means if you click the link, you'll see some big sales. Dot com, $11 a year. Design, dot design, $1. Dot art, $1. And we were talking uh, on iOS today just a couple hours ago about getting a wiki. And uh, I convinced Micah he should get a wiki. He registered sergeant.wiki for $1. $1. I have my own wiki address. I have my own email address. Having a domain is great. For instance, email is a good, really good example. Uh, you shouldn't be really using a Gmail or a Hotmail or a Yahoo or an Outlook address. You can use those services. But you should have your own custom domain, Lindsay's email or whatever. I have so many. Yeah. I, I, I think I have 30 or 40 URLs on Hover. Like oh, I, I know I do. Yeah. I, I, don't, I haven't counted, but it's, I know it's a ton of them, yeah. uh, including an email domain. That way you can move around whenever you've got, uh, you know, you, <laughs> it's a bit of a list. <laughs> whenever you, <laughs> it's a bit, of, it's a bit. <laughs> you never know when you're going to need another you never URL. Know. Well, like when I wanted to set up. Our Twit community. I happen to have Twit community that I had registered. Right, right, right. Perfect for our forums. Yep. When I set when I set up our Mastodon, I had Twit social set up, and that's just one of maybe a dozen Twit uh, domains right. I have. Hover has, of course, dot com, dot net, all the big ones, but they have lots of very nice custom domains at a very affordable price. With every uh, uh, domain you get, who is privacy protection free? Let's uh, let's find a domain. Let's say a domain for, um, what should we say? Say Karsten. Let's look at some Karsten domains. So I'm just going to enter in Karsten, and it's going to suggest a bunch of TLDs. It's searching 446 different registries. Karsten.art, Karsten.inc, Karsten.co.club.app. And Karsten, now you're going to have to go register those really quickly because everyone sees yes, them now. So. Karsten.cloud. I use Laporte.cloud for my Synology. Karsten.computer.host. That's good. If you ever want to host a show, Karsten, owning Karsten.host wouldn't hurt. I do not want to host a show. <laughs> Karsten Software, Karsten Solutions, Karsten Boutique, Karsten LLC, Karsten.actor. You want to be an actor? Dot band, dot camera. I use Leo.camera. That links to my smug mug. That's where all my best mm -hmm. pictures are. Uh, I could also, if somebody hadn't taken Leo.photo or Leo.pictures, I could use that, but I like Leo.camera. I am a camera. Uh, just it goes on and Karsten dot dental Karsten I know you secretly want to be a dentist it's not too Absolutely. late to get yeah completely available these are all at hover dot com very easy to navigate not all that n upselling and let me go back to my domains because I want to show you how easy uh, DNS is when I set up uh, my wiki for instance I went to Laporte dot wiki and I just changed that car you know the beautiful I've got Laporte report that would have been a good one uh, it's easy to modify the DNS either send the name servers to somebody else or use the DNS settings built right into hover.com could look how clean and simple that is that's what I love about hover lots of sales if you if you if you didn't get there in time for the eleventh anniversary, there are always sales on top level domains. You should always check those out. It is a great way to get a, an email address that's custom, that's unique to you. It's a great way to set up your next website, your business. By the way, I wouldn't even name a business without going to hover.com first and getting the domain names associated with it. Right? These days, you gotta have. I mean, we that. we open this probably every week or two where you're thinking about something. Oh, I want to do this thing, and I yep. need a URL, and yep. and it's part of the decision process. Like, can I get that that URL? Yeah. Uh, I immediately got my kids' names. In fact, if you if you know somebody who's get, having a baby or you're having a baby, get the kids' names registered now. I have abbylaporte.com and henrylaporte.com. I registered those 20 when they were born for 20 years, and I've recently renewed Abby through 2030. Mm -hmm. And uh, Henry, whoa, he's going to come up next year. I'll, I'll, I'll get another 10 years on, uh, on him. Um, it's just a fantastic place to create a domain name. Easy to use, nice people, great tech support. I, it's, it's just the place to go if you're starting a business, if you want to do email, if you want to do a family wiki. I just set up my family wiki. You can't get in, so don't try at Laporte.wiki. But in fact, you see, it's it's warning, security risk ahead. <laughs> That's all right. I don't. I, I accept the risk. I accept the risk and continue. 
Um, if you go to if you my wiki, by the way, I named it the 4 a.m. wiki because I set it up at 4 a.m. Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> very uh, scientific. Very scientific. Uh, it's a family wiki. That's where I put stuff that we want to right. share, and it, it, it's easy for everybody to do. There's so, you'll find a thousand ways to use it. Ten percent off your domain extension for a full year at hover.com/slash/twit. Get a domain name that represents you, your passion, your interests. Get hover. Hover.com/slash/twit. It is a great place to register all your things all the things hover.com slash twit thank you hover for your support thank you for supporting uh, us by uh, by using that special domain name hover.com slash twit now time for the picks of the week let me start with a guy on the far right mr renee ritchie okay so this just was announced uh yesterday and i watched every video i could find on it it's from edelkrone which is sort of a higher end video gear company, but they make a lot of things that were previously incredibly high end, sort of quasi affordable for like the prosumer market. And for a while now, they've had a set of robotic camera accessories. Ooh, they've had a head that was <laughs> we need this. It's a, a mini jib, it's a little baby exact, jib. It, but it's also fully automated. So they have a modular system. You can get sliders, you can get heads, you can get basic heads or 3D heads that pan and tilt. <sighs> You're gonna and you can connect Carson them all together. <laughs> so the cool thing about this, though, is that you put the you put the uh, you mount this the uh, jib, then you mount one of their heads on it. If you want to, you don't have to, but if you want to, then you can place the camera where you want it. Press a button, place it up to six other ways. Press those buttons, and then it will move with your um, with your your desired level of ease between all, any and all of those camera positions, and even just loop back and forth if you so choose. You can remote control it if you want, uh, but ideally you set where you want it to start, you set where you want it to oh, go totally through, and you this. set where you want it to end, and then it just does it for you both sideways, ver vertically, horizontally, and diagonally. So you can get some amazing shots, even if you're by yourself, which is what really sold me on it. Oh, for any YouTuber right. uh, or, you know, when you're doing Vector, for us, uh, we're, I just yes. told John to buy a couple because uh, we were look, we, this is exactly what we were looking for mere hours ago is a way to do easy jib shots, smooth, easy jib shots. Look at that influencer. She is golden. <laughs> I think man. that's just for the jib, so I think, but the head module. It's you got to get a head too, which is probably the expensive part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's about a three grand pack. If you get both, it's about fifteen hundred for the jib, about fifteen hundred if you get that head. They're having a they sale through the end heads. of the month, but still, you need the head because it's one thing to have the jib move. You got to also have the the look at that. This is what and they also have the little pros robotic do, legs, right? If you want, tripod, wait a minute, it's got a it'll walk. No, well, not this. Well, you can modular it all together, so you could put this on top of one of their their motorized shot. leg units, and it'll drive around and get the shots that you look want to. The whole shot. thing is amazing. That is beautiful. Yeah. <gasps> and their sliders are good. They've heard nothing but good things. Is it Both pulling focus jet. too? It looks like it's pulling focus. It has a focus, an optional focus module that you can buy for your camera, and it'll stick on the lens and then do the focus for you as well. Oh, so you see that module on the right of the on the left of yeah. the camera? Uh, yeah, now they're using the, it with the DSLR, so clearly it has some pretty hefty. Uh, I, I have heard like, some people put C200s on it, but you can't do the full extension. That's that's over the legal limit, so you have to extend yeah. it less to make up for the weight. But John, like a, I, see, I see a lot of them have big counterbalance weights on them. A yeah. BMD, yes. uh, a Black Magic 6K would probably be in, yes. in the in the weight range. Oh, and that, that new SG, I forget what it's called, but they have a new uh, camera that's 6K, but just just literally just a body. Right. It's so small, so I mean, it's getting really, really. Good. I love it that uh, that uh, you're all over video now, Renee. Like you're becoming like a little <laughs> mini Alex. I'm right? like a mini Alex, yeah. <laughs> a awesome. mini budget Alex. <laughs> uh, I I give you a full authority to buy that and a head. And you know what, John? Get that with the uh, Canon E. What is it? The E200. We're going to get a little, a little uh, mirrorless Canon. I what, got the EOS R, which is really good. M200. This is a little. Um, uh, it's APS-C, yeah. um, and Canon's pushing it for streamers because it'll it'll do live streaming, and you can change lenses. It uses uh, does I don't remember what lens uh, system it uses, but fairly inexpensive. And I think that's sitting on that. See if they have a focus pull module for the <laughs> yeah. uh, the M200. Canon's got good color too, which is why I like them. Yeah, yeah. Wow, good pick. Thank you, Renee. You just cost me three oh, grand. That's amazing. <laughs> 
it's already pushed out to like I think two weeks or three weeks for delivery. So I wanted to make sure we got it out quickly. I'm still because waiting I'm sure for my uh, mini A Tim that uh, Alex got me to buy. A me too. Ago. Yeah, where's it's that? It's still yeah. backward. They're yeah. making them as fast as they can. <laughs> yeah, Lori Gill. What what what, yes. should, what else should I buy? Well, you did just get yourself a pair of I. Pods Pro, mm, so, so maybe blueberry. you should get yourself a beautiful leather case, the <gasps> Air Snap Pro from oh. 12 South. Oh, sold. <laughs> Ooh, look how pretty that is. Yeah, it's really good looking. And they so they've done a, a minor update to to this particular model. This um, is why you, you don't lose your with... Air pa uh, Pods. <laughs> yeah. I keep them hooked to my fanny pack all the time. It's true. Mm. Um, so they've they've added an S clip instead of the standard clip that they use. So this is a removable clip, which is really uh, nice for people who don't necessarily want to use it. And it comes with a wrist strap. So I don't see how that is ever going to be useful, but <laughs> there's someone out there who's going to think that a wrist strap is useful, and it does come with it. So and they, you yeah, can they charge it with the with, with the case on. It's got a little. Yep. Yeah, it has the charging. Did you buy baby uh, blue? Black Baby blue is the cognac. best color. It looks so good. Really? Yeah. See, Lisa always says, oh, you'll always buy the brown, Leo. Brown. <laughs> she hates brown. <laughs> Maybe I'll get the black and, and throw her an S-curve. Really yeah. nice. AirPods. Yeah. It's the AirSnap Pro from 12 South, which does great stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, Andy, it's your turn. I'm just going to make some changes here. If if, if I'm, I'm I'm sick and tired of all the really great <laughs> video that quality video hardware that Renee is putting in, so I'm just ah, going to the I'm Crane going to Cam 2000 has reemerged. I'm going to intentionally tank my video settings because now <laughs> try, trying to compete with it with him is Let just useless. Go. So now then, okay, that's better. Uh, much nicer. Much nicer. <laughs> Uh, actually, this is this is a camera-based recommendation. Uh, I often I often say that like I'll, I'll be reviewing something or taking a look at something and saying, "Wow, for like uh, for six hundred dollars, this is really not very good. But for a hundred and ten dollars, this is really incredible." Uh, and so uh, I'm gonna the pick of the week is the DX1 uh, iPhone camera. This came oh, out about yeah. this came out four years ago for six hundred dollars as a it has a pop-out lightning. Port. And so basically you, you click it onto the end of your iPhone, you run you run an app that controls it. It has a 20 megapixel Sony sensor. Uh, it's built like a nice, like a, like an old fashioned cigarette lighter. It has a sliding cover, all these nice things. And the problem was that for $600, it really didn't, it really didn't work very well. It wasn't very, uh, the, the app kept losing contact with the, with the camera. And when you talk about, this is a conventional camera, meaning that the impetus is usually on you the, the the camera's job as a conventional camera is to record as much data as possible so that you can then dump it into a photo editor and create that those really nice details that nice color and lighting that you want and it really the the, the weird thing is the, the 600 dollars camera could not compete with the photos that an iphone was generating because it was doing all that photoshop so to speak uh on its own now so dxo that was kind of a failure and now they're being clearanced out Amazon has them for $127 plus a $15 coupon if you click a button down to $110. Uh, and I haven't so and for $110, this is a really interesting camera. It's, it, it's like this pebble-sized uh, 20 megapixel camera you can have in your pocket at all times to take pictures with when, for whatever reason, uh, your your phone isn't going to do, or whether you're in sort of a more of a 20 megapixel raw uh, uh, photo taking sort of mood. And the best way to use it, I found, was it'll actually work independently if you if you if you don't have it connected up to uh, to an iPhone. It has its own shutter button, and also uh, after like uh, its initial release, they added a little update to its little LCD view, LCD uh, screen on the back to make it into a kind of viewfinder it's it's one it's it's two pixels deep so it's, you're not going to get like all the tonality but if you want to line up a shot it'll work just fine and the big deal is that if you if you forget this is an iphone camera you're talking about a super 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 compact as in never leave the house without it 
uh, camera with its own rechargeable battery, a 20 megapixel, really good Sony sensor, which records directly onto SD cards, uh, recharges via uh, micro SD, and its native raw file format is just uh, Adobe DNG. So you don't need the support from DxO. You're not going to get any. Uh, you, you can just use this as this little like snapshot camera that will take these beautiful raws that you can then dump into Photoshop and do amazing things with. So like for $600, no. For $300, no. For $200, you have my attention. For $110, you have me like trying to remember if I this, if they made me an offer to buy it and keep it or if I actually send it back because if I don't have one in the office for $110, I might just buy one. It's worth taking a look at. It's a very, very interesting I, uh, object. I've got a couple uh, laying around. Um, yeah, yeah, you we, gave me <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I, uh, I, I, we actually did the initial video for them, you know, for the for the, the product. Um, we, we made the video for them. And, I still um, have mine, but I don't. I feel like the iPhone camera is so good. Well, so the, the, the only this thing... This is a one-inch sensor, but, right? It's a one-inch sensor. Yeah, it looks yeah. way one better. One-inch Sony sensor. It yeah. looks way better than the iPhone. Like, it, it's it's not, like, a little better. Like, I, when I take pictures of them, I, I, I was going through something the other day through my iPhoto, and suddenly the photos got really good, and then they went back to being <laughs> good, but not... And then I realized, oh, that's because the, my D, uh, that was a show that I shot some on DX on, on my DXO oh, and some on my iPhone. So um, you shoot video with it? Well, this was stills, but you oh, can okay. shoot video. It'll shoot 1080p video. Oh, nice. And again, it looks and, good. And, and what's really yeah. nice about it is the swivel. So what you can do is you can you can swivel it if you want to shoot like a high shot. Um, so I'm I have to admit uh, I wasn't thinking about this, but. When Andy started talking about it, I realized, oh, I should pull it out for cooking videos. I'm working on these little cooking videos right now. And it would be really easy to um, turn it down and get a great, great image with something that's relatively compact. This is um, such an expensive show for me, I swear. I know, it's really good. <laughs> God, I've already bought everything. Yeah, so you already have this one. Oh, but you I have this. I don't have the newest one, though. Do I? No, Maybe I think I it didn't change. It's I the same. Yeah, exactly. Well, right. I yeah, yeah. So it's, it's it, at $110, it's a, it's a steal. Oh, it's a must-have. Yeah, it's a must-have. Yeah, it's, and, it's, and, and, I, and I reiterate that you can – I'm recommending it not as an iPhone camera, although uh, it, you can certainly do that. The apps, you don't know how long those apps are going to be compatible or upgrade, updated. Right. You can control the whole thing through that little touch screen in the back. Oh, so you just uh, use it as a little baby camera. It's, it, you totally That's, feel I, like spy, I've, like a spy when yeah, you take yeah, pictures I, of I it. Found, no, I, I did find myself, I, I don't know where it is right now, I, I took one last look for it before, before the, during the commercial. But yeah, I found myself carrying it in my pocket just as part of my EDC because, again, it has a sliding like lens cover that's yeah. kind of sad. It's almost, it's almost like an Air, uh, AirPod case. Oh, so just so use satisfying it as a camera. to slip on. You can't. Yeah, it, exactly. It that, totally, that's, that's, what, that's how I was using it for. Yeah. It totally there, there'd feels like. There'd be times where I'd be like, taking a snapshot with the iPhone and it's nice. Then I realized that, ooh, you know, the, the colors in those flowers, like the, every once in a while, for some reason, the Boston Park, Parks Department gets it, gets it in their ear to, oh, we have to plant like amazing amounts of tulips and they'll all be stolen in two weeks. But for two weeks, we'll have tulips and if i'm there it's like oh you know what the colors are so good and the, the sky is so blue i actually want a real 20 megapixel raw file of this <laughs> uh, so that i can right. tweak it as much as i want in photoshop and that was when i would not there was it wasn't a situation so, where i would have brought a camera with me but since i had this little like pebble sized camera i don't have me, to worry about the app then to do all those settings no like no it no, worked, no. again it even it okay. even saves in dng for uh, oh, file that's formats nice. so yeah. you can just a boomer and put it on your phone you can but all the hip yeah. cats are using it by itself <laughs> and a little public service announcement please people stop stealing boston's tulips okay <laughs> That's just not or okay. Not be Take before Andy gets there and manages to get his backpack filled. <laughs> what kind of low life would steal tulips from Boston public parks? Oh man, yeah, I, I don't you. know. There's, there's we, we're we're see. We're, Is, we're are we sure it's not Dutch reclamation? Is it Dutch reclamation? <laughs> or a little gopher? Maybe one of those squirrels? Andy. Oh, keeps it's one of Andy's of. squirrels. Yeah. <laughs> Alex well, Lindsay. Oh, before. Your yeah, what's it called? Just just breaking uh, to go with our subject today. They, um, the Guardian just reported that they think Jeff Bezos's phone was hacked via WhatsApp before all of the oh, recent geez. Saudi Arabian stuff went on. Yeah, see, they there was some thought that it was his uh, girlfriend's estranged brother that did that, but now they think it was a hack, huh? Yeah, via WhatsApp from the Saudi Saudis uh, yep. nation state. Yep. Yeah, there you go. What do they? What has he got against the Saudis? What is he doing with the? No, the Saudis are doing the president's bidding. 
So it's all a the Washington Post. It's yeah. all it, it is all transactional. That's how right. this all works, right? You right. scratch my back, I scratch yours, right? right? right. So um, and remember, they were using the they mm. used the Inquirer, another one of the tres, president's crony, right, right, right. Uh, to to publish that. How them, yeah, yeah. So the whole it's a it's a wonderful circle of friends, happiness, of, of scratching each other's backs. Yep, a circle of blight. <laughs> <laughs> Loud Lab. What is this? Okay, this is so, Alex's so the, pick. For a, one of the things that when we're doing live streams uh, for, for clients, we pay a lot of attention to the audio. Audio turns out in most shows to be uh, more than 50% of the show. It yes. is really 80 to 90% of the show. Uh, and the quality <laughs> of your audio is really, really important. People can look through uh, a lot of rough video, um, but if they get a lot of crackles and all kinds of stuff falling apart on their audio they'll immediately tune away. So we want to know if it's too loud. We want to know if it's out of phase. We want to know if it's, or, you know, all of these things are things that are important to us. Um, and so, uh, so anyway, so this is a, what we used to use is Spectre. And Spectre went out of, um, they disappeared. So anyway, so we can't, we can't get Spectre anymore. And it was a little, getting a little unstable. This is called Sonic Atom. And Sonic Atom is made by Loud Lab, and they have a couple different apps. This is the one that um, that I've been playing with the most, and I'm I'm really happy with it. And this, what it does is it gives you a whole series of graphs and ways to analyze your audio. Uh, audio because you can't see it, you really need a lot of different ways to measure it. So a lot of the things that we use are a spectrograph and spectrogram. These are showing you across this the, the spectrum frequencies across the entire spectrum. This is you know, what's happening. The spectrogram shows it in color, so you can kind of see it there. And the spectrograph is kind of a cross-section of that spectrogram in a lot of ways. And so what we see a lot of times um, in those is if I, have a, if I have a ground loop in my audio and I have a little buzz that you hear a lot of times when you see po politics, <laughs> uh, is <laughs> you get this little, and we can look up and see a spectrogram and I can just see a line going across it and I go, oh, I need to go over and look at that. So a lot of times I'm dealing with multiple streams I'm, you, some of the stuff we've done is up to 20 different rooms being streamed at the same time i can't listen to all of them i need to just look at the graph and just see oh that's what's happening over there and so and you definitely don't want to cross the streams yeah definitely don't want to cross that the streams <laughs> so so looking at things like um and then the I, and i don't know how to say this because we i just got good at saying leisure zoo meter and they've changed <laughs> it to go, gonio uh what? gonio meter oh, i've um, never known how to pronounce that like, word, it word i've been but seeing it since i, was I think a it's kid. lisa hoos yeah is it yeah but uh, I, I don't know what the new term is. Anyway, so so but that that allows because at least see, whose curve is a certain kind of curve. Yeah. yeah. But, so yeah. so anyway, so and there's obviously multi multimeter uh, loudness, um, a lot of other you know you can even do tuners so you can play things and it'll just tell you what what finally note you're, something you're I don't have to buy um, oscilloscopes. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so a lot of this stuff is stuff we use all the time. We put, we literally have walls of these. And what's nice about using these, there's hardware that does this. But number one is this is a lot less expensive. Number two is that you can design how it's going to look. So each one of these windows, you can scale, you can move it around, you can change the settings in a way that you can't do with the hardware analyzers. And so we really like um, to use software analyzers because when it's coming in, especially on an SDI signal, it's going to be the same. It's you know, it's it's just embedded. Meter. It's anyway, kind of be pronounced goniometer. That's what I. That's what I think. Yeah, and I was like goniometer. <laughs> exactly. So, so anyway, so it's it's a great. Uh, this is the, it's a great, especially if you were using Spectre before and you're trying to find a solution that solves it. Uh, this this solves it. There's a couple things that Spectre had that this doesn't have, but this has other things that Spect, uh, Spectre didn't, and and it's a and I think it's much more stable. Um, it looks nicer. Uh, it it is, um, and it's it's it's. We had trouble with stability. Um, By so, the way, that so is, is pronounced. Pretty, you were right, Lisa. Who he's French, Jules Antoine Lisa. Who, but you could also call it a Bowditch curve, and then it'd be in English. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so the, I've always said Lisa Hoos, but it's a Lisa Who curve. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah Lisa and who? Or yeah. <laughs> it's very complicated. It yeah. took us a long time to figure yeah. it out, and then it's they changed a, the name. It's a closed it. curve. <laughs> anyway, if if you're really looking for, an, uh, you know, if you're if you're doing something where you really need to analyze it, and you're looking for a Mac solution that does this really well, um, this is a uh, this is a great affordable solution to do that. There's obviously crazy solutions that let you measure the room uh, atmosphere. Do we need like this, that, John? But. Should we buy this too? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was my guess. Although I have to say. 
<laughs> I'm looking at the other things that Loud Lab does, and they do have some other interesting products, including a, a sound mixer and a very simple audio editor. I'm really interested in it. I haven't gotten to play with these yet. Yeah. The audio um, editor, Fluctus, and uh, the and their um, sound mixer is something I'm super interested in. I yeah. just haven't looked at it enough to recommend it yet, but stay tuned. There may be recommendations in the future that are related to those. <laughs> this those looks items. like it's such a clean, easy editor. It would be perfect for doing the kind of editing I do, which is voice editing. Right. You know? Um, and, uh, boy, I, that's, you know, Mac and Windows on this one. Let me see how much it is, just out of curiosity. I use... It feels very... Like, so far, the, what, I've, what I feel like these are... Oh, it's they're, 40 bucks. They're really affordable. Yeah. And they are... It's a very modern uh, interface, so you just really feel like it's responsive. It's doing what it needs to do. And, and you know, it, it doesn't feel like you're dealing with a lot of old code. Who are uh, the... Who is this loud lab? Who are these people? I don't people? know, but I'm going <laughs> to bet that they like the serious the audio geeks. <laughs> Where did they come from? Yeah, so... They all their names of their stuff are kind of um, like Fluctus, but that's an interesting name. It's not quite Lisa Who. By the way, here is a Lisa Who curve on an oscilloscope that was later adapted to be the logo of the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. So, yeah. our friends down under are familiar with the Lisa Who. Isn't curve. that what Tony Stark was using? Yes, Can't probably tell. <laughs> a Lisa Who suit. Friends, we've come to the end of this show. What a fun show. Uh, I thought we had a Always. great conversation. Always is, but this was so particularly much. enjoyable. Yeah. Thanks to our panel, not me. I just I just am here to hold the keep the seat warm. Uh, Mr. Rene Ritchie is at iMore.com and he is going to do a vector. He has said he promised he'll do a vector yes. explaining all of this encryption complicated turn your <laughs> messages in the cloud off to get security kind of a weird world we live in yes sir thank you imore.com slash vector for the vector shows are did you buy are you using a jib one now i ordered one but I, the, all it. the videos were up by the time i ordered it, so it's going to be several weeks before it gets oh, here so cool <laughs> okay we're going to have dueling jib shots oh that'd be so great <laughs> especially when i get the alex mixer and then i can actually switch them in oh, as the show starts yes then you need a big 3D logo, a trumpet section. You know, you know what you can. What I bet you can do with the API inside of Black Magic is you can set it up so that when you cut to that shot, it does it, it automatically. Start, it, it cues the yeah. yeah, yeah. We could do that with a TriCaster. I bet <laughs> yeah. you could do it with the API. Yep. Oh, I know you can. Yeah, that's Alex Lindsay. He gives us lots of expensive ideas. Hey. At Alex Lindsay <laughs> on the so Twitter, A L E X L I N D S A Y. My kids are now on TikTok. <laughs> You've oh. been pushing TikTok like crazy. I'm just telling you. What is? Do you want to say, share their account with sure. you? Us? Sure. It's called the McDubbies. It's their idea. The McDubbies. Yeah. You, if you go to if you go to uh, Twitter, they're pretty funny actually. Um, M M C uh, D U B B I E S. Uh, no, it's it's Y S. Y. Well, there was a big discussion about I I E S uh, and Y S, but it, we decided if it was a name. Um, Am I M C D U B B? Well, you know what? I should just go to. If you go to Twitter, twitter.com Twitter, slash Alex Lindsay. It's like the last thing I tweeted, I think, so it's, it's it'll be easy that to would, find. That, that's easy. That's easier He's to find. He's now flogging his uh, kids' TikTok account. You know, I just want them to be... <laughs> I, I, there's here's a tire on it. It's blunt that, that, that I just want them to have some followers. I want them to be encouraged. They're Let's really, uh, everybody they're follow the everybody, McDubbies. Every, every, everybody, there they are. See, no, it's right there. Right there. Just click on that. The McDub... Oh, it's the McDubbies. Yeah, the McDubbies. You forgot the... The... the. And they're, they're going to have the best special oh, effects. They they get the sound up. I got to hear what she's saying. Oh, well, this is, they're, they're, they're doing lip sync. Yeah, but, uh, oh, yeah, we can't play That's the music because we'll get it taken No, no, I, I don't me. think so. This is you all stuff you. that's part of the. I'm me. We are too. Yeah, but we'll try it here. Wait, go to. Go, to go ahead, turn it up. You can play this. No. This stuff? Nope. They're saying we'll be taken the TikTok down. TikTok stuff? Well, you can Screw you, YouTube. <laughs> Just screw you. Take here, me I down, know, here, wait, YouTube. If you play the one. Play that that second one. It's definitely not copywritten. All right, it's not a music. It's Play not music. the sound. It's in there. It's some sort of. Um, could it be possibly my my like fifteen missing cookies that just vanished out of nowhere? <laughs> I didn't eat them. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Well, where are they, Parker? <laughs> so anyway, that is hysterical. <laughs> Excellent job they're, on the lip syncing. Yeah, they're 
They're, 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 it's become, you know. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is Daddy behind the camera? Yeah, I'm the camera operator. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. You need to get one of those jib ones. I know, I know. The, for well, the TikTok operation. And put them on a gi- on a green screen. Alex, yeah, green screen. Yeah. There, it's already it's coming. It, there's, oh, I bet it is. This is going <laughs> to be the best produced TikTok get, channel yeah. ever. It's going to be ILM quality TikTok. <laughs> it, 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 it gets a little absurd because you know there's. Uh, um, there's production meetings. There's a database. Oh my god! I built a database in FileMaker that keeps track of all the oh, all the TikToks yeah. and the sounds and the notes and the storyboards and the and then we meet and we are talk about animatics? which ones are yeah, getting done. Yeah, I was going to ask, are there animatics? Yeah, I there's not there animatics, are. but that's that's going too far. <laughs> but <laughs> that there's storyboards. There's storyboards. The some Everybody, of them, some of them may require it. If you're on TikTok, the McDubbies, T H E M C D U B B Y S. That's a very TikTok name. In TikTok, you wouldn't do IES. It took a lot of work to get uh, that name. It, it, registering in TikTok turned out to be kind it's of It's not fun. them C-dubs either. It's the McDubbies, not them c I have no idea what it means. They they came up with it. It's like great. They were like, what do you want to change? Call, call your channel and do it. Like, You're McDubbies. smart. You should let them. They're, they're internet natives. You should let them live yeah. as an internet native. Well, and here's the thing is, is, I don't know. I mean, we're on a different, The what we watch TikTok on is a different phone. We watch them together. There's not like, I feel like, eh, I don't know how much risk there really is. Oh, who and, cares if the Chinese know about new math? Exactly. <laughs> and, I don't care. And the, the funniest thing is, is it's such a great way to teach them uh, media production, production because yeah. we're doing everything, but it only lasts for 10 seconds. And so you, you sit there and you can plan all this stuff out and they get right. like a mini version where you're done with it and yeah. you hand it back and it's, you, people watch it. And, yeah. You know, nice. it's, it's, it's yeah. fun. It's fun. Uh, only 18 followers as we speak. The McDubbies Just went will up yesterday. be a million followers. Well, that's our goal. Everybody get out there and goal. follow him. Andy Anako, follow him all the way to Boston Public Radio, WG. GBH at oh, good Whoa. lord it's suddenly <laughs> it's the solarized Andy Inako uh, again I I, I the, this is a this is a strange game this video one up from ship the only way to win is not to play <laughs> shall <laughs> we play a game when will you be on GBH no, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna smudge up the smudge up the lens too, so it's oh not God. In focus. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was I was uh, I was actually on uh, yesterday, uh, so you can go to wgbhnews.org to f- hear what I have to say about the FBI versus Apple and a couple other holiday flavor flavors. I think my next my next up, I'm back to Fridays next Friday. I think that'll be at the Boston Public Library at 11:30 in the morning. I think uh, as usual, you can watch it live or later. It's streamed on wgbhnews.org, and if you go to my Twitter feed. At Anatko, I usually tweet out like when I know the exact times. Usually Fridays at around eleven twenty, but we tend to, as as presidents keep getting impeached and stuff, <laughs> the schedules kind of change. We'll send you a, a jar of Vaseline for the next yeah. episode. <laughs> Please give give, yeah. give me the Barbara Streisand model it's, for the. <laughs> yes, it's in the budget, I believe. Lori Gill needs no Vaseline. She's fabulous. Managing editor at imore.com. Now with her new wood paneling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, We're all stepping up our game now. Stepping Come up on. the game. Man, I'm going to have to get to work here. Get that jib. Thank you, Lori. Anything Thank you, you. want to plug? Everybody else plug stuff. You got your new TikTok got channel up? Nope. Oh. I, I have not signed up for TikTok mm-hmm. because I can look at TikTok Without signing up for it, so that's how I'm going to stay. <laughs> Lori made an awesome article on how to export your Apple Card uh, oh, transactions. New today. feature! You can finally. Yeah. It's yes. been driving Lisa crazy. She says, "Where's my statement?" I said, "Well, here's your statement." She says, "Well, how do I put this in the QuickBooks?" She, Lori's got you covered. <laughs> I said, "You can't yeah. until now. This is a new feature of the Apple Card." Thank you, Lori. We'll all look that up. Thank you all for being here. We do this show every Tuesday right after iOS Today. You can make Tuesday your Apple day, starting with iOS Today around 9.30 Pacific and then MacBreak Weekly around 11 a.m. Pacific. That's 2 p.m. Eastern. That's 1800 UTC. Tune in and um, and watch the show. Uh, you could participate in the background if you're watching live. The live stream, audio or video, is at twit.tv slash live. And the chat room that goes on is at irc.twit.tv. For those of you who listen on your own time, <laughs> you can get copies of the show at twit.tv slash mbw. We're also on YouTube, at least until they take this episode down. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can also... Uh, hey, Jude, uh, don't make stop it, it bad. Stop it! Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Stop it. I'm a troublemaker. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
That'd be interesting to see if Content ID fingers that or not. That's uh, <laughs> that's going to be interesting. You can subscribe in your favorite podcast application. Uh, just look for Mac Break Weekly. And if you are listening, you know, after the fact, we do have interactivity for you too. As I mentioned, Twit Community, our forums, and our new Mastodon instance, Twit Social, are all wide open, and uh, we love having you in there. I hang out there, and we get our hosts to do that as well, if possible. Uh, again, thank you for participating, and. I'm sorry to say it's time to get back to work, though, because it's because break time. <laughs> How many years have I been doing this wrong? Be you made it up. Time to get back to work. Because break time is over. Thank you, Alex. Let's <laughs> see you next time.